Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stream. How is everyone doing today? I'm doing pretty well, even though, you know, not today. But, hey, Great White. Hey, Derek. Hey, Steven. Hey, Nick Nick. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Malfrey. Tuxedo. Phil. Nappin. Wizbuilds. How is everyone doing? Hey, RS Makes. Kevin. Tiago. Evidences and Nappin and Shammy. Lots of people here. Hey, Brian. Hey, Turtle. Hey, Arthur and Bill and Dave. Mark and Subsector and Skyrim and Jeff and Squirrel Brain. <laughs> How is everyone? Hey, Zombie. How many people saw yesterday's uh, charity stream? That was fun. Um, I'm glad I didn't have to talk a lot. Um, but it was still it was still a good good thing to be a part of. So, <laughs> hey, Stephen Smith. <laughs> How are you? Um, hey, Mitchell. Hey, Tohos. Hey, K35 and Pedro and Obi-Wan. Nappin, Jack, Colin. Everybody. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> You're okay. Awesome. Hey, Rafa. It was good. It was a good stream for a good reason. Yep. Yep. That stream was awesome. I was up at 5 a.m. watching that. I watched most of it as well, too. Well, not most of it, but I watched, I had it on most of the day as background noise. So, um, yeah. Hey, Projects in Dad Garage and Paul, Colin and Kenneth. I probably said a few names a couple of times. Um, so today we are going to continue working on the um, 0 0.2 upgrade with RepRap firmware. We're going to get back into some of the firmware configuration, finish up a couple of minor hardware things. Um, just an FYI, I am um, several days into COVID now. So it's interesting because I um, got my booster shot on Tuesday. And I got COVID and flu booster shot at the same time. And... Two days later, I started. I was still feeling um, kind of the after effects. You know, you get your booster shot. You know, you, you feel like you're. You know, you're gonna ha expect some tiredness, some, some, some feeling. Um, so the um, I'm just assuming that I had that. But then on on Thursday, so I got it on Tuesday. On Thursday, I started to feel just a tiny twinge in my lungs, and I, I kind of blew it off for a little bit. But then Friday morning, I. Um, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go home, I'm going to test, and just in case, and it ended up coming back positive. So, very unfortunate series, but very fortunate that it's now. I'd rather it be now than several days from now, because at this point, I'm fully, uh, I mean, I'm feeling fine already. I had like two days of bleh, um, and that's already gone. So, um, I may cough a couple of times. Um, but like, I mean, you saw me in the stream yesterday. I coughed a couple of times during the, during the thing, but, um, otherwise I was fine. My energy is fine. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much, I mean, I, I did, they did put me on the Paxlovid thing, um, just as a precaution. Cause I, this is the first time I've had it. I have no idea how my body was going to respond to it. So, um, I am feeling fine. The rest of the family has not got it. My wife has uh, got her booster several weeks ago, so maybe that was enough to keep her from um, getting it. But um, yeah, so unfortunately, that proves I don't have a super immune system since I had been able to avoid it through MRF 2022, through all the flights, through all the traveling, through my son having it earlier this uh, this summer. My wife is the one with the continuing super super immune system so <laughs> um no we we understand eclipse that the booster doesn't prevent transmission i i get that um absolutely and and but we so we are absolutely uh, extra isolating right now especially with the trip coming up um so i didn't go on the pex of it as i was already getting better before we learned it was covid yeah i think i i think i probably caught it less than a day into it maybe maybe whatever but um yeah already the feeling in my lungs is basically gone um yeah so hey tt um the celebration stream that was a ton of fun and i thank you all i am working through the um the 
the winner's list. I'm about halfway through, so everybody should have received, if you if you want something, you should have received an email from me just basically confirming that I'm acknowledging you won something, I'm working on it. Um, I, did, I did have very low motivation um, a couple of days this week, um, probably because of this, and I didn't get much done on it, but I am working on it. So, seems like a great excuse to stay home and hang out in the garage. We'll hang out with you. There we are. Both of my virus shots this week, both arms sore. Yeah, I did it in each arm. The, the, the COVID arm was much more sore than the flu arm. Um, but it is what it is. And I'm glad that it appears so far that I've had a very mild case. Um, and I'll be continuing to isolate all the way through the trip. We're not going to risk that my, my wife catching it late and not being able to go. So, um, yeah, the, it'll, be, it'll be fun getting ready. <laughs> So, um, shots effect is weird because it seems different for everybody. Yeah. Four by four done. Perfect build for you to do on stream. Well, I've got so much, I got so much planned and I've got so many things stacked up that I should be looking at, but okay. Um, Thomas, I get a choice. I could have done it in the same arm. I, I, I chose to do it in different arms. So, um, yeah yeah so we are on the um my email must be taking the dial-up route okay if you won and you didn't get an email from me none of them bounced so check your junk mail folders check your filters um if you've done all of that if you've checked all that and you didn't get an email from me then go ahead and send me an email i didn't want everybody to just say hey got it i didn't want just a ton of emails that i was going to have to delete but if, if at this point if you haven't seen it and you actually want a prize, then shoot me an email. Um, I am going to be asking for that number that you put in the form, um, if for confirmation. So, yeah, just found it. Not sure how I missed it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> awesome. But that's still the case. If somebody is missing it still, go ahead and um, shoot me an email. Um, on the Discord, in the stream chat channel, there is a pinned post of the winners if you wanted to see if you won or not, if you weren't here. Because um, for most of the prizes, you didn't have to be present to win. Um, but I got a lot of good feedback from that. I'm really pleased with the way that went. Um, my friend Grant even used the form in one of his giveaways. I am going to modify my, my Polymaker form eventually. I just didn't get to it. Um, I didn't get to a lot of things I really wanted to. So... On to this. So here is our state of affairs on the doop, the the V zero here. So last, what percentage of people picked forty two for their numbers? I actually didn't pay attention. I did see several forty twos, and I saw a couple of people that got the math question wrong, um, but I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. Um, hey, hybrid robotics. It's an awful stream. I didn't win a printer. <laughs> I don't know if I remember my number. You can actually go back in um, and edit your, you can actually go back into the form. I think you still can go back into the form and edit your response, maybe. That'd be interesting to see if you could. Um, sorry, I was running behind. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. I'm actually feeling really good. Um, I had pretty much full energy yesterday. I was, I was around doing things. I've gotten good nights of sleep. I'm feeling fortunate. So, um, so here, here's where we are. What we did not finish is the complete, um, filament route path. Um, I was missing the little clip, the little, um, ECAS, um, push clip here. I found my stash of them. So I put that in off camera. And then the other major thing is we had a fan failure on the um, part cooling fans. And I figured out why. And this is, I will say this is almost all my fault because really I should have checked. Um, I should have checked this, but I did make some assumptions when I was on stream wiring it up. So the way the board is designed, 
so, so that your hot end fan has your polarity set one way. The routing and the way that it was designed, the park cooling fans, the wiring is opposite. I set them all to the same. I didn't double check. I don't remember if I had access to this at the time. I don't remember if I even looked. I made an assumption and I made a mistake. So I have given some feedback that this really needs to be changed. I think at least, even if there isn't a standard for these wire pinouts, it should be consistent on a single board. You shouldn't split it up. Now that's not, this isn't the only place that that's been happening. But um, I think in general, we should be looking at stuff like that when we're designing um, custom boards. Um, the possibility of making a mistake um, makes a huge, <laughs> it, it makes this really something that should be changed. Um, anyway, I've already chatted with Hart K about it. I think, I think we're, we'll see where it goes. So, um, who do we have? Hey, Maurice. Hey, John. You slept then, so it's all good. Hey, Laura. And I assume Sean. I just had to try one of the Hue Forge packs. The only reason I grabbed so many. Nice. Hey, Marcel. Okay. That's something I will be sure to add to the listing for them. Sure on my side and for Embrico. Yeah. So it's something that, I mean, the board works. Um, it's just something to be paid attention to during install if you decide to go this route. So <clears throat> with that out of the way, oh, I grabbed it by the wrong thing. We are going to route that. Um, I think this might be the best way. There we go. We're gonna route this to this. I think I'm just gonna take a little bit more of my black tubing here and I think I'm going to put it in here. And this will um, will just miss the fan with a nice sweep into the into the extruder. So I'm gonna put that in there and then mark this thing maybe with just a little nick of the of the with a knife and then cut it to go in there. And then we'll be, we'll be that much closer to just being able to throw filament in this and seeing how it goes. Um, PF Dennis, thanks for the gifted memberships. Hey, 3D Experiments. Hey, Danny, welcome. Hey, Tight Gen. Um, who else? Got the most parts for my solid fork to order and get a 0.2 frame ordered. Awesome. So, let's see. I want to... I don't need these for this. I want that to be right about, I think right about there. And I can shorten it if I need to. And I actually did something, I forgot to do something I want to do on this. So I'm gonna find my parts I want here. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and take this out, which is nice and easy there. I did a really stupid rookie mistake Thursday. I shorted my SB2209 board by trying to place a jumper where it, when it was on. Oops, that's never a good idea. I had the stream to my calendar, so I'd be sure to remember it. Awesome. I mean, there'd be 181 watching and only 62 likes. That's a great question. So let's, let's, let's go through because I forgot to do this. Polymaker filament giveaway. We do it every stream. Um, you get a choice of a roll of filament from a list, a pretty extensive list. If you're outside the U.S. and Canada, if you're inside the U.S. and Canada, then you get a, um, a coupon to the, to the, to the Polymaker store. Uh, I do the drawing at the three hour mark, which is two hours and 45 minutes from now. You have to be here to win. Um, if you like Polymaker filament, there's a link in the description. That is my affiliate link. Uh, we apparently sold a truckload of Polymaker filament during the celebration stream. In only half an hour, a ridiculous amount was sold. So. <laughs> what else do we have here? Yeah. Okay. Back to here. Get my glasses on so I can make sure I cut this exactly where I wanted to cut it. 
Okay, so I have a short length of PTFE here. Now, on any area where filament is going to enter the PTFE tube, I think it's a good idea to use the little chamfer bit. So if I'm gonna put this in here like this, I'm gonna use a little chamfer bit and just put a little, a little chamfer on that. Um, and I just did this by hand. And then make sure that no PTFE got stuck in there. And that goes there and that'll go right in there like that. And that is it. Hey, Ballistic Tech, welcome. Hey, 777 Thibs. What else do we got? A tuxedo. Okay. And then we have one more piece. This. And there's an entry here. And I'm gonna cut a short piece. Now this is a really tight fit, um, but I found if I cut a short piece, I can get enough leverage on the end of it to push that through. So if I go, where is that? Get it in first. I was able to do this with another piece yesterday. It's really tight. I don't know if I got it in there all the way or not, but we'll just leave that right like that. Okay, then. Put the back skirt back on. If I use a reamer, I can. Um, I'm not 100% sure that that's a straight um, path though. Um, I don't want it to be loose. So we'll see how it feeds filament. As long as the, um, the, the PTFE forces it to go in straight enough to hit the other side through the, through the filament out sensor and hit the other side, then we'll be okay. A reamer is likely going to make it loose to where it can fall out. Right now it's not falling out. Okay, and I'm gonna take the chance and throw the bottom panel back on so I have some feet to set it on. Confidence is high, always high. Hey, Andres. Okay. My printer stands away. I don't magic smoke, so I know the board is. I don't know that the board is still okay. I don't actually. Um, I haven't actually tried this. I replaced the fans. Oh, it's on. Okay. <laughs> I replaced the fans, um, but I haven't powered it on since. So let's go here, I guess. Doo, doo, doo. Maybe, maybe here. Let's see if we can get to it. Um, what was the, what was the IP address of this thing? Let's see what the IP address comes up as. Hey, Nogorot. Right. Hey, the W. So yeah, um, I really appreciate uh, Norgal Rod and, and company from the uh, RepRep firmware 
um, what is this? Rep Rep Firmware, DSF, and DWC um, Discord have been very helpful and I appreciate it. Um, I, I spent a little bit of time over there and we're gonna go over a few things that um, they've been able to help with. So, hey the W. Hey one leader Peter, did I say that already? So let me open up my phone and see what IP um, this ended up getting. Just because I don't remember. And I don't remember what name I gave it. So let's just go in and figure it out. Um, clients. V0 Blue is there. Okay, let's see if V0 Blue works. Hey there, it works. Nice. Back to working on the Octoprint plugin. We'll have the stream on the in the background. Awesome. Okay, so I named it V0 Blue. Duet Web Control is loading right now. And if I fry these fans right now, or, then I'm going to maybe cry a little bit. So. Then I'll blame COVID brain. This is taking a while to load up. There we go. Connecting. There we are. Okay. So let's go ahead and I think fan, fan zero here. Let's go ahead and do it this way and get a, yeah, you can see that's not started right now. So fan zero should still start. Oh, that's fan. Oh, that's the part cooling fans and they work. Fan two apparently is this. Um, can I force it on? Oh, I got to set the temperature, I guess. Anyway, part cooling fans are working now. We're getting some air. So that's working. So, hey, Ram Online. Welcome. And I don't think I said hi, Madcat. Hi, Madcat. So it's fixed. So now we can move on. Get back into the rep rep firmware configuration and get this thing, um, get it printing. I don't know if we're going to print today. We'll find out. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Do I 3D protected MOSFET? The high quality board. High quality board. Hey, NeroQ. Um, and let's just make sure that I didn't screw something up. Let's go, let's just go to, have we done a, have we done a PID tune on this? I don't think we have. Let's do a PID, PID tune and that'll tell us when the, um, the, the hot end fan turns on. Um, hey Rushmir, thank you. Thanks for being a member. Um, what do we want to do? Go here. So let's go back to the user manual for rep rep firmware. I want to search for PID tune. Set PID. Is there a PID tune? Tuning. Or, or do we want to go to the, um, where is it? The getting started. And what was the first? Sorry. What was it called? The, the, is it commissioning? Is that what it was? Turn on power. So let's go back through these steps. This is where we were. M203. Okay. Uh, but if we go through here, we're, we're doing first checks, checking the thermistors. They're good. Um, I think, I think this is probably the logical way to go through here is to check. Let's keep going through the commissioning steps. Cause that's where we left off. We were checking things. We, we were checking the fans and they, and they, and they failed. 
uh, because I miswired them. Um, so let's keep going through this. We're also going to touch back on, I made a big deal about motor currents. Um, that's been, that was documented here. Um, and a couple other things, but we'll, we'll get through them. Um, so we, we did, now we've checked the fans again and they are working. So checking the heater functionality. So manually controlling the heaters, um, checking the heater name. So the, the hot end, I think we, we, we heated up and it did. Um, let's see, is there, here we are, tune the heater. So I'm gonna go straight to tuning the heaters to check them. If it fails, if something fails on it, then we'll stop it. But we're going to um, confirm them at the same time as tuning them. So let me see if I can zoom in on this a bit to help me and you. Can I, is there a way of hiding this on the, I don't have a button to hide the menu, huh? Okay. You recommend that you tune your heaters after ensuring their functionality because it gives the firmware an accurate model of how your heater responds. If you have received a temperature error and a heater is marked as fault, click on the tool. You can also send to reset temperature faults. To tune heaters, use the M303 G code command. Heaters must be at room temperature before starting tuning. And that's why I want to do this before testing them, because I don't want to wait for them to cool back down. <coughs> so tune, tune tool heaters first. In control console, send M303 T0 S200, where T is the tool number, S is the target temperature. Now, if we right click on this and open this in a new tab, this should send us straight to the parameters. This, this, this documentation for each M command um, is, is invaluable with RipRap firmware. So we, it's telling us to do a M303 T0S200. And if we look at this again, we'll see T is the tool. So we do T0 is, is the hot end and the S is the target temperature. We can also change some other parameters here. Um, you can set ambient temperature, use this parameter if you want to tune a heater that has been on and has not cooled down to ambient temperature yet. Um, you can do some more complex, oh, fan PWM to use when the print cooling fan is turned on. Ignore if the T parameter is not present. Use a lower value if a printer uses a powerful cooling fan that you do not normally run at full PWM. Okay, so we're gonna do the defaults for right now but just know that there's other things you can tweak within this command. Have you had a fan not spin unless at 100%? Yeah, some fans can't be PWM'd. Um, okay, so if we go back here and we're just gonna do this M303 T0S200. I usually print um, PLA and that'll be our first test print on this. Usually print PLA closer to 220 or 215. Um, so that's what we're going to set this to. So we're gonna go to our console and we're gonna M, M303 T0S215 as a target temperature. So when I do this, it should start heating and go through a, um, can I move any of this? No. So, Go ahead and, do, oops, did I hit the right, there we go, here. There we go. So auto tuning heater one, auto tune starting, heating up, and it is heating up. So we see our temperature increasing here. Fan just turned on, so our hot end fan is working. P value is really great, especially if you're on tune the bed PID tune and don't want to use 100% power. Okay. <coughs> So I don't know if you can hear the fan. It's running at a hundred percent. Gonna do its thing. Let me see if I can move 
at least get rid of the um, chat there for a second. You can see the, you can see it doing its thing in the graph up here. Hey, Maker Viking, welcome. Hey, 3D Impact. This is Duet Web Control. So it's heating up, settling, and measuring. Let's go put that back. It's just heating and cooling and cycle. Hey, Scotty. Oh, we got... Hey, BBs. Is your Vision Miner 22 IDEX still coming next week? Vision Miner 22 IDEX? I, have, I do not have a Vision Miner 22 IDEX on the way. Yeah, this is a Revo Voron. It, the Revos heat up, heat up very fast. Any of these uh, smaller mass PTC um, heaters tend to heat up pretty fast. 15,000 for one of those. Ouch. I do have, I did keep and I'm going to keep my um, P.O. Poly Magneto X order. So I will be doing a short, probably an unboxing and check it out. I don't know if it's going to be a Sunday stream. It depends on how busy my stuff happens. That's one of those that I could easily do a, an extra stream on because there's no prep. I'm just unboxing and checking out and setting up. Um, I have so much that I need to get done on the regularly planned streams that I don't think I, I can do it on a on a Sunday stream without impacting the schedule. So. Hey, 3D Puck. Hey, Pathetic Puma. So, yeah, this takes a little bit. This is good. <sighs> Measuring with fan on. Oh, now it turned on the turned on the part cooling fans. This is cool. This is a little more involved than the um, clipper one. Hey, dead broke. It's not very late. How are we doing on the likes? Waiting on the Nighthawk to come out so I can finish my Trident 250 build. Yeah. Once the Nighthawk comes out, I'll do a, another small stream on um, installing and setting up the the Leviathan and the and the Nighthawk. I'll do those both in the same in the same build. So I think one of my one of my series plans is to take my old green and probably the green V2 and do a series of updates on it, including those. What will be my first print? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, suggestions are welcome. Luke Gary, thank you. Uh, good morning. I mean, on Leviathan, are you obligated to go 48 volts? No, you don't have to go 48 volts. We will be installing it with 48 volts though. I have a small 48 volt power supply that I'm gonna put in. <laughs> Say hi for me, Shammy. Let's see. Nighthawk is um, LDO's uh, USB connected um, stealth burner tool head board. So instead of can, it just uses a USB cable. Now it's custom USB cable with an extra little board under the deck that's uh, that injects 24 volts. Um, but it's, uh, it's basically connects via USB instead of can. It's a little simpler setup. So. 
Yeah, you did. You weren't kidding when you said it takes a while, but it's doing more than than a normal with the fan on is a is something that um, Clipper doesn't do automatically. So apparently the the Leviathan is fully retail ready. Um, the the Nighthawk is is a little bit will be. Uh, wow, that's interesting. Heater behavior was not consistent during tuning. Auto tuning heater one completed after three idle and 30 tuning cycles in 390 seconds. This heater needs the following M307 command. Edit the, okay. So am I, should I be, let's see if the documentation says anything here. Um, result, if successful, the firmware will report the parameters to use. So it reported the parameters to use. If you need to hot tighten troubleshooting, if you encounter any ARC, tuning the heater temperature control for more. So let's see here. Tuning the heater temperature control for more. Hey, buddy, welcome. Um, I lost the train here. What's the Nighthawk? Nighthawk is the new USB tool headboard from LDO. How the heating control operates setting. I'm going to kind of skim this, although I need to read the whole thing. I got on a printer. I fixed up. I reran and it went away. Check settings for the heater and the air message. That is actually useful. Yeah. Air message, um, auto tune fails. If auto tuning fails with a message that the temperature is not rising fast enough, this indicates that you're using too low a P value or the dead time temperature faults. It's not giving me anything on, I mean, this, this gave me a value was not consistent during tuning. Yeah, you need to take those parameters and put them in your config or put M501 at the bottom of your config and generate I can't, oh. Yeah, let's just put, okay, so let's, right, I understand to put this here, but do I need to rerun this or whatever? Is this good enough? Even though it gave me a warning. Okay, so in my config.g file. So I've copied that. I'm gonna go into the config.g file and look for the, what was it? The M303H1. Oops. No, what was that? Um, M307. M307. Oh, it doesn't have one. Okay. So I'm going to put this. Doesn't matter where I put this. I put it in the extruders just after the extruders. Is that fine? No, that's that. Heaters. Probably after the heaters. Let's put it in here. The bottom of the config. Yeah, that'll be fine too. It's only a few lines further. Okay, so let's save that. I think I just need to run the config file. Let me make sure. Edit using match this. I'll make the V parameter if the heater is not powered from VIN. Okay. <sighs> Heaters need to be defined before you define thermistors for them. Yep. Okay, so go back to do I do the same thing for the bed to tune a bed or chamber heater send 303 h0 and then the temperature where h is a heater number for the bed or chamber that's tool I want to tune the heater of a tool without tuning the effect of the fan okay so t0 
is the is the tool head in general that's why it included the fan and everything if i had wanted to just tune the heater on there i could have used the h command right so what did i set the bed should be um eight is the bed h zero H is the heater number for the better chamber and S is the target temperature. Tuning these heaters can take a long time, possibly up to two hours. Can this actually take up to two hours? That's a problem if it takes two hours. Hey, Martin. Should I... Um with an old huge 12. Well, let's give it a shot. If it takes more than about 20 minutes, then we might cancel it. But yeah, I'm, I'm very aware of the CR 10, 12 volt. Um, it is, yeah. Okay, do I need to confirm here if we do this and go over, where did I set my, so if I go to system and config, my heater for the bed, axes, extruders, end stops, heaters. So, H0 is out zero. Which was out zero on the, let's go to, do at three, mini five plus, and, the pin out eight out zero okay so this is my bin out zero i just wanted to confirm because i didn't remember what um it looks like out one and two are the hot end and out zero is the bed so we can use this same command so we're gonna go um close this and we'll tune the bed and then we'll see if it actually heats up so this is m303 h0 s60 and we'll be starting with pla on this anyway so Send. So now it should be auto tuning. Let me just see if I can feel this thing. I feel it heating up. Yep, it's heating up. So it's working. I got a got a green light on my SSR. Oop, right, right there. <laughs> And if I turn the chat off again, you can see it just starting to heat up there, the blue line. Hey, Botterid. That little bed should take more than, shouldn't take more than 15 minutes. Hopefully. Did you pass the voltage command to your hot end? I did not. Okay. So that's doing that. Let's put chat back on. And we can sit here and chat while this does its heat. It is already at 60 degrees. If you have inconsistencies, it does help. <coughs> Morning, Doom Crew. Were those fans roasted from the last stream? I have not tested them. I'm assuming that one or both of them are popped. I haven't tested them. They're sitting, they're right here. I'm not too worried about it. Um, Where am I visiting outside of Oxford? Just London and Oxford are gonna be the two locations we're at. We're not trying to make this a complicated trip. It's a, both of our first times out of the US and we figure we'll have plenty to do in those two locations. So now it's going through some cycles. I have a 200 watt DC bed on the V0 and it heats up way faster than my, yeah. 200 watts on a V0 is a lot of bed. What is this thing? I think it's a hundred watts. Yeah, we're not planning on renting a car at all. 
we're gonna take the train from between London and Oxford and we'll rely on buses and tubes in London and we'll rely on rides and Ubers or whatever the equivalent is around Oxford or our feet. Hey, Ravenous. What is happening in London? I'm actually visiting for the first time too in two weeks. If you're going to be there in two weeks, Marco, there is the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rep Festival. Uh, SMRRF. Search for that. SMRRF 2023. There is a big show there that you, if you're going to be in the area, you should go. Natural History Museum and London Dungeon are great places to visit. Yeah. Natural History Museum is an, is an absolute on our list. And don't take the UK taxis. We'll see. <laughs> it's Uba. <laughs> don't forget to mind the gap. Uh, we have Uber, so no problem there. Don't forget about the black cabs in London. You can't come here and not take a short trip. Okay, we will. Cannot recommend anything more than Italy and its culture and Czech Republic. I really want to, obviously I want to go to Prague. I'd love to get a, a Prusa um, tour. So, I have to head outdoors. I doubt I'll get drawn for the filament, but if I do, then I'll join Polar Ted's club. Take care, Jeremy. At some point in your solid state relay for your bed, you should drop the Q value a, a lower number. It defaults too high for SSRs. It won't hurt anything, but it'll be better in the long run. Okay. Um... I will try to remember that. Okay, this is settling. So what it'll do, settling, measuring, and then I figure it'll be done after that. So is, that, is anybody that is, um, going to smurf or have looked at the the items on auction anything anybody's bid on oh have fun arthur car shopping can be fun and and stressful at the same time <laughs> i think you put a new line instead of editing line 73 there wasn't an existing line in there um are you talking about for the for the for the PID tune for the hot end? I searched for the command and it wasn't there, so I added it. That closed loop kit from Duet is nice. Yeah, I was surprised about that. I didn't know they were working on an actual combination of parts kit like that. K Breezy is betting on it also. Nice. I'm looking forward to seeing the um, that that printer that Adam built. What's it? What's it called? I'm drawing a blank. The shoot, I'm drawing a blank. I bid on a chameleon. Nice. Saw it in line seventy-three, and it does dated history, which I saw there. Can I go? I think I can go in here and look at this. Line 73. 73, M307. Oh, I searched for that and it didn't come up, didn't I? M307, 00. zero. Look at that. It, oh, well. I did a search. It's still up here. It doesn't search in here when you search that way? Control F. Oh, now it comes up. Okay. So I'll have to fix that. I'll have to fix that. Thank you. That's a good, good call. Let me close this. Go back to the console. Darwin. That's the word I was trying to think of. And I just drew a blank. Thank you. We will be at Rocky Mountain. Awesome. I will absolutely be there. I, I'm considering trying to do um, Rocky Mountain and Rapid TCT. 
considering rapids in California next year. So that'll be an interesting because it starts two days after Rocky Mountain ends. Yeah, Bill, you can caravan with us. <laughs> We're driving. You can pick us up or you can catch up with us on the way. <laughs> so our plan is the driving there to Rocky Mountain is, or at least last year it worked out well, is we drove from Sacramento to Salt Lake City and spent, a, spent the night in Salt Lake City and then did the second part of the trip. Um, the next day. So it was about a 10 hour drive on day one and about eight hours or so on the next day. Rapid's gonna be in Anaheim. Now, Rapid isn't free to get in. It's I, if, if I'm reading the, the tickets right, it's about $100. And I don't know if that's $100 a day or $100 um, to just get onto the show floor for the, for the three days. Can anybody tell me what screen this is? This is Duet Web Control. This is the built-in web server for the Duet RepRap firmware um, interface. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's at the convention center, Danny. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent, but it's, it's in Anaheim. I don't know the exact location, but that's a good, good assumption. I'll turn chat back on. You can see, you can see the pattern it's been going through here. It seems to have slowed down the, the heat up and cooling cycles towards the end here. Thought that was missing out on an update for main cellar fluid. Hey, Collie. <sighs> Two days of driving 12 hours over the mountains is a pretty tough drive. It is. It is. But it's, it's the one Rep Rep Festival that I can drive to. So that's why I'm, I, I did it last year, or did it this year. I'm going to do it next year. Yeah, out of Adam. Welcome. Yeah, this started at... ten forty two. it looks like. So we're only... 11 minutes into it right now. That's not bad. Command search tool that do it 3D is kind of finicky. You have to type slow for the searches to come up because it's looking up based on every keystroke. Where, what part of California to drive from, Bob? A very general region is fine for me. Or if you don't want to say, that's fine too. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to Smurf. I'm so glad um, that if I was going to catch this, it's any later and I would have been in trouble. At least once a year from California. Lake Arrowhead, where, where is that? I, I don't know for sure. Let's see, Lake Arrowhead. Lake Arrowhead is, oh, okay, that's Southern, okay. Yeah. We, uh, my, where I work, we had some uh, facilities and or projects 
in the San Bernardino area. Okay, auto tuning zero, heater zero complete after nine idle and five tuning cycles in 752 seconds. The heater needs the following M307 command. So now we're gonna copy this. Copy this and we're gonna go into our, oops, system and config G. And those M307 commands, here they are. And this is for, I think it's for H0, right? Yep, there we go. So I'm just going to, I'm just gonna delete this one. Um, actually, I'm gonna keep the comment there. There we go, delete that. And now I'm gonna come down here, this, and we're gonna put it here. There we go. Now that's all fixed. Okay. Let's see. Smurf will be awesome. My first rep rep firmware being in the UK. I, I can't even say how much I'm looking forward to that. Gotta go we'll pick up the convoy in Salt Lake. Oh, there you go. What, um, are you from in the Salt Lake area? Norcrot? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's save this and run the config. Okay, so that should be that. I did the double flu COVID vaccine on Friday, felt bad yesterday. Today seems to be much better, yeah. to go have a nice stream see you nathan have a good one okay back to the commissioning so now we've done the tuning i'd like to know a little bit more about the warning that i got on the um uh, on the hot end if we go back here i'd like to know a little more about this why is that yellow what can i do to make it not yellow i didn't see that immediately so if anybody has any suggestions that's fine but i don't want it to hold up i think we're going to be okay um to to move forward so we've done our tuning so now we're going to check our end stops so the the one other thing that we ran into last stream is that i couldn't get sensorless homing working um, no matter what it wasn't triggering and it wasn't adjusting to the um to the to the values i was changing it didn't have an impact uh, what i found out and what i don't know is um how great the documentation is because it's been two weeks um, is that you it doesn't work with the um, TMC 2209s you have to be in stealth chop mode for it to um, for it to trigger if you're in spread cycle mode it won't trigger so from what I read it's a command when the config does not have but it did have an M307 command from the start Okay, so I hope you and the miss enjoy your trip to the UK. My wife and I went eight years ago and have been wanting to go back. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that won't, it won't be the only trip. The plan is um, to do trips like this. Okay, back to sensorless homing. So if we go here and I, and I just try to home X, let's just pick up where we left off. We were having trouble with sensorless homing. Pick up where we left off. If we go here um, and I try to home X, I think I've got it set right now where it is going to um, it is going to trigger early. So, yep. So it just triggered early. the The value is too sensitive right now. Um, I think I set. Let me let me catch up. I need to find a reason to get you to Boston. <laughs> I haven't been to the Boston or New York. The furthest I've gone in that direction is Delaware. Um, let me see. 
Well, Chad, if you put M51 at the bottom of your config, you can then save all these settings with M500, just like Marlin. Oh, okay. Well, will it, it'll update the existing, it'll update the existing, um, you were trying to tell me this before and I didn't get what you were saying. Um, if you put M501 at the bottom of your config.g, you can then save all these settings with M500, just like Marlin. So you would, let's, let's check something. Just a few miles north right on the way. Nice. Let me, let me take a little sidetrack here. If I go to config G and I go down here and I put an M501, M501. And if I want to take here, let's, let's make a little, a little tweak here. Let's grab this as our, as our experiment and let's save that and run the config. And if I go back to the console and I want this to be 23.8, right? Instead. Oh, shoot. I didn't show any of that. Let me go back. If I go here and I go to config and I add an M501 at the bottom because my, my face is in the way. Let me, let me get rid of that for a second. There. Okay. So, and I got it cut off because apparently I cut off that part of my screen. Okay. We can fix this. There we go. An M501 at the bottom. <laughs> I need to change the scaling on my stuff, apparently. Um, and then we save that, which I already did. So let's go here. And then if I go back to, and I can put myself back on. If I go to the console and I enter the, the PID tune, and I'm just going to change one little bit of it. If I make that 2308 and I hit enter, that's going to, that's going to, it gives me a warning. Sure. But now if I go to M500, it should save it. No M501 command was executed in config.g. Did I do that right? Or do I have to restart the, the board for that? Let me get back to where you said that. For the folks who who chat, if you put M501 at the bottom of your config.g, you can then save all the settings with the M500, just like Marlin. I did reload the config. Here and here. M501's at the bottom. Let's save. And I ran the config file. Let's just restart the mainboard. Let's do a restart. I did hit the reload last time. But maybe it needs a restart. I believe the warnings you get during PID and right now is because you have a powerful heater in your hot end. And Rip Rip Firmware is just making sure you know that thing will melt aluminum. Well, it's a 40 watt or whatever, 30 watt or whatever the default Revo heater is. We now have a config override. So if I go back to console, there's barely any, oh, I need to fix that at some point. Let's go here. Now I want to set that to 0.8 instead of 0.9. And it's going to give me this error. I don't, I don't know why. Um, and now if I hit an M500, there we go. Okay. So I had to do an actual restart. So now if I go back to system, and edit config G, that should, it did not. Where is it supposed to set that? It didn't save it. It's still at 0.9. Look in config override. Oh, I see. It sets up a config override. Well, I'm going to change that back to nine and we'll leave that. I see. Okay. We learned it saves in config override. Yeah, it, it's convenient. I don't like it. It's convenient. I, I, I'm not a fan. 
Um, I guess I can do that and then eventually transfer those over to the original config. Now I can see a Z offset. That, that seems like a reasonable thing to put in a config override. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's the same on all of them now. Put it back to the 0.9. Yeah, exactly, Patrick. I'd read the config G and wonder why it's different. Now, if you're if you're aware, I mean, it, it honestly, it's the same thing on Clipper, right? So, if you do a a save config for some of those values, your your Z offset, your PID tuning, all of your values, actually, all of your values, at least in Clipper, all your values in the config get commented out, and then they get put at the bottom of the of the config. So that's a little better, I think. Hey, Vladimir. Um, okay, back to commissioning. So checking end stops is where we're at now. We are trying to get sensorless homing working. And I might need some reminding on what the best practice here is to set this up. Now, if we go to the system and homing i think if we go to do we just have a home all no home x dot g this is where we were playing around um with settings here so we're dropping the motor current oh let's go back to that let's squirrel a little bit back to motor current um if we go to the manual and go Let's go motor current. Choosing your stepper motors, is this? There is a spot in the documentation that I was pointed to. Hey, Ella. Um, hey, Zarp. That does, because we got I got stuck on, the config says, what is the peak current of your steppers? There are spots in the documentation that says, you should set your current to about what was it 15 to 20 percent lower than the peak than the rated current of your steppers so um here maybe this is it this is the maximum current you may pass through both windings at the same time the maximum current through each one winding which is what really matters when using micro stepping is rarely quoted and will be a little higher However, even when one winding driven at the quoted rated, the motor will get very hot. So usual practice is to set the motor current to no more than about 85% of the rated current. So we're going to go back and change my currents on the, on the steppers. And I may have already done that, but we're going to check them. 85% um, of the rated current. Therefore, to get maximum torque out of your motors without overheating them, you should choose motors with a current rating no more than 25% higher than the recommended maximum stepper driver current. So, do it three mini five plus, recommended maximum motor current, two amps peak. We're not gonna be anywhere near there. Um, I am keeping well, thank you. <laughs> hey Keith, welcome. Thanks, I thought it was appropriate today, although I'm feeling fine. Um, okay, so, with that, let's let's go back and make sure that I have the um, I have my stepper currents set. So let's go to our config.g and go down to our ah, figure out which one it is. Oh, here we are. Configure mic and so see smart driver section for where is that? Where does this get set? It's in config overrides. What? Did it move it over there? No, not here. Are you caught up? Are you caught up, Nurgle Rot? Are you current? Okay. Config.g. Where do we set up our what is the
Is that Axis Max? It's also useful for the offsetting. You can make a macro to copy your baby stepping, stepping offsets. Where is set motor driver currents? Here we are. This is for the later generated. So we set, so what was the maximum current on these things? What is the rated current? I don't remember. So 1500, 1.5 amp. So these are still set to max. So 1.5 times 0.85. So about 1.2 amps is what we're going to set this to. It's a little, a little lower than 85%. Um, so we're going to go 1.2 for these. Oops, I accidentally hit the end key. And then Z was a one amp. So we're going to go, um, let's just go eight. We'll go 80% on these. Oops, I hit the wrong one. Z, we're going to go 800. And the extruder. Now we're going to, we're going to do, I, what, what, what would you guys do for a, for a stealth burner style extruder in RepRap firmware? What would you set that to, Nurgle Rep? So I know we set those, I, I tend to set those quite a bit lower than the, even the RMS and still get them to work fine without overheating. I wonder if this will be the traditional setup. Can you run water-cooled steppers higher? Sure. What would you guys vote? Because I would set this to like, what am I setting on? 0.6 is about the max I run on these. So should I run this at like 600 and see how it goes? And then idle is, 30% of that, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's save that. This is going to impact our, um, our sensorless homing setting. So this is why this is important for us to do this before we go in and tune sensorless homing. Let's restart the main board. PFN has 500 in his configs, runs on all his printers. So that's probably okay. Okay. I'll, I'll monitor temperatures, but at least we're in the ballpark now. Well, I'll be monitoring things, but we're more in the ballpark per the documentation recommendations. Now, the I think the config configurator could probably be reworded um, on that because it does say peak current there. The documentation clarifies that, but... Um, hey Aaron, welcome. Okay, that is there. Now we can go in and tune. I think we can tune this. Let's find the sensorless homing. Um, let's go sensorless. Stall detection and sensorless homing. So we're gonna, we covered some of this last time, so I'm kind of catching up. Um, limitations of stall detection, minimum recommended speed for stall detection. Stall detection sensitivity. Using F1 should reduce the likelihood of getting false stall reports. Is this, oh, here, sensorless homing. Sensorless homing means not using end stop switches, but instead detecting the stall. Enable sensorless homing. Ch change your end stop type to sensorless in config.g. To change your end stop, you must change the M574 command. M574 X1. So S3. Include the following. This sets up the last main command needed for sensorless homing. Save your changes. M915. So include the following M915 command in, in config.g. Let's make sure we did that for both axes. 
M915. Where did I put those? Or is that in the homing? Did we end up putting that in the homing file? Because I don't see it here. Yeah, I don't see it here. So that must be in the in the homing override or the home home X. Yep, here's M915. And then this is the sensitivity that was set. So minus 127 is the most sensitive. So yeah, we we're, our goal, our, our continuing goal is to hit 300 likes by giveaway time. So let's see what we can do to get there. We're, we're, we're on track, we're good. We're an hour in and over halfway, I'm sure, right? I only see a one. The, the way my scaling and my screens show, I see how many people are here. We have almost 300 people here, which is amazing. Um, but I only see one, uh, the, the first digit of the, of the likes. Okay, so this is saying M400, which is wait for current moves to finish. And then uh, this is this is saying dropping the motor current. This is actually dropping the motor current to fifty percent, is what these commands are doing. And now this is setting up the sensorless parameters. And then apparently, is it waiting for that things to finish? Is why the M four hundred is in here again, or does it not need to be here again? And then, <laughs> thanks, pathetic. Uh, set our position and then we're gonna we're gonna move the z make sure mo z moves out of the way we're going to move quickly to the x-axis and stop and stop there first pass and then go back a few millimeters and do it again so and then returning the current to a full 100 percent it's about to go to nice just waits for the last move commands to finish. It's a tiny safeguard. Okay. So now, oh, Lonmo, thank you. I, I, I mentioned Nurgorod earlier, but I, I, I recognize you were another person really helping last stream. So um, appreciate it. So now I think I can grab this command here and copy it. Well, that was weird. There's barely any space. Yeah. Why did that do that? I hit control C. Okay. <laughs> that was weird. Jamie, thanks for the gifted memberships. Let's let this reconnect. All I hit was control C. Maybe I fat fingered it. Let's go back down here. I want the 915, oops, 915 command. Control C, there we go. Let's close this. Now we can go to the console and I can paste this here and I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna change this to zero and huh. I'm gonna change this to zero see if that's not sensitive enough. Zero is right in the middle because the range here is minus 127 to 127. No worries, Nogorod, I figured something happened there. But if you rerun the homing, G will always use the default value. So you need to comment it out. Oh, so I can't, I can't change this and then run it. So do I have to do I have to edit it? Because I was hoping that I could just run this command. But if I have to, if it's easier for me to just go in here and change this, that'll be easier. I, I didn't realize that, but we would have figured it out. Let's save that. And now I can, now I can try homing X. So let's go here. Let's bring this in here. And I'm going to just home X. Okay, so that's 
It's either not behaving as I expected or it's still too sensitive. If I comment the M915 and homing out, it'll work. I'd rather just edit the file at this point. So I'm gonna go in, I'm not gonna show it here, but I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna change this to 100. I want it to not um, stall out at some point. So let's save that. And now let's try homing again. There we go. That's what we want. That's what we want. So we want to, we want to see either side of the extreme so we can narrow in on a on a good value. It's easier to live. Some XG is it will parse and execute on each. It's easier to live dit. I don't get it. It's easier to live edit home XG as it will parse and execute. Okay. <laughs> the only right number. Okay, we're gonna try 69. We'll try 69 and, and if it's and if it's too sensitive, then we'll try 42. Um here, let's go edit home X. I'm gonna change that from 100 to 69. Although our proper method should be going closer to zero and start working either side of it. But, and now we're gonna home X again. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, um, where is motors off? Where, isn't there, is there a button for motors off? What is the motors off command? Interesting to see this process and rip rep for more. Thanks for bothering our horizon. Yeah, the idea, M84, thank you. Let's go M84, then I can put this over, and now we can, and I'm gonna home X again. Oh, 69 is still not sensitive enough. So I'm gonna do another M84, and go in and edit the home X. And only because we got to do the numbers, we're going to do 42 this time. And then we'll actually go back and yeah, <laughs> move this thing over. So this is 42. Home X. Oh, 42 is not the answer in this case. <laughs> okay. So now let's go back to, um, let's run that. Well, I couldn't do negative because I already know that zero is um, still too sensitive. So it's somewhere between zero and 42. So, and I'm just editing the files right now. So instead of 42, we're gonna go 13 because Danny said so. And then home exit, oh, let's move it over. And it is moving awfully fast for a, that seems awfully fast for a first homing move, isn't it? Did zero slam it into the side? <sighs> let, me, let me find out. Very fast for a home access. Yeah, let's, let's, let's reduce that. Now the, the, here, let's go ahead and go back here. If I go to system and home X, our, our speed is 10, let's see, 10,000. What did the, where was that stall detection? I mean, that's their recommendation was 10,000, but that seems really fast. Did you wash your PEI sheet in cold water? Uh, what is this? Let me catch up on chat. There's a recent addition that helps get reliable sensitivity values. M201.1 let you set homing acceleration values so the tool head position on the axis don't influence sensitivity. Low Excel helps. Is there anything in here that says that? Is it, how recent is it?
my mind so this is out of the way 6.66 350 i think zero went like 10 and stopped you want to do it's millimeters per minute yeah yeah i did i say second i know that's not per second um We have said why just, and it's just because. It's a new experience, 3D experiments. Rep rep firmware is different from what I've covered before. Yep. It appeared around, but it's not in the, it's not in the docs here for senseless homing. So we can explore that later, but let's get this working with it as it is. Let's slow this down because I think it is too, too fast. Um, moving back is fine. We're going to move half the speed. Okay. That's in there. Which we're, let's try zero again because I don't remember exactly what that did. So let's save that and then go back here. Go to the dashboard and home X. Okay. So that moved. It's still not sensitive enough. So zero isn't sensitive enough. Oh, don't forget to keep it above 3600 like it says in the docs. Did it say that? Oh, yeah. In this example in step 2, the F parameters in the G1 commands for the X and Y are quite high. This is because for senseless homing, your printer must obtain a minimum required speed. Keep F above 3600. Save your changes. Okay, sorry. Let's fix that. So we need that to be higher. So that needs to be higher. So let's go 6,000 and let's go. Yeah, let's just go 3,600. Save. Sensitivity will change. Yep. That's why we just need to rerun this as it is without changing the not changing the value. So let's go back here, run the M84 command again so I can move it to the center. And then let's do a home X. There's an example in stream chat. Oh. Ah, example working home X on a V2. So this is going to be completely different because it's different the 5160s. It will be different values between F6000 and F3600. Do you have to actually change it? Because it says... Let's go here. It has... Drop motor, motor current, lift Z, where is our, it doesn't tell us to change the value in between here and the docks. There's no mention of changing it between, hey Neil, between changing the speeds for the second pass or first pass. Now I'm looking at Nurgle Rot's docks here. here. Let me look. Let me pick, copy this and paste it into the config and we can examine it. Let me copy this and go in here and go to our home G and, and this is a working config for 50, our 5160s. 
So we're doing the same M400. We're setting our, set the X and Y to sensitivity three, do nothing when stall unfiltered. So H, that is the same command we have up here for the 915. Drop motor currents to, well, 50%, not 20%. Um, It's a cat cam. Sorry, Neo, Charlie passed a couple of months ago. So we may get a Charlie cam or a cat cam sometime in the future, but yeah. Is there a go-to guide for a rep rep firmware installation people use? The the Duet Docs is is going to be your go-to guide. They're, they are very good. It's just you you need to read them. <laughs> it's important. Okay. Um, use relative positioning, energize the motors and move them one millimeter in the X direction to ensure they are not stalled. Lift the Z, move to the front up to, to, up to a distance. Sorry, the comments are off there. I was working live config. Yeah, that's fine. That's, I can, I can get around that. Um, move away from the end. So we're doing, we're doing basically two moves at the same speed, but this is also at 3000. Um, how, how accurate is the 3600 that it says is the minimum? Okay. Look for the remembered stream. I believe it's posted a bunch. Oh yeah. Um, is input shaper as good yet on rep rep as clipper? Um, yes. Yeah. And comparable, like, yeah. Um, so this is how, looking here, how important is this statement here? It does say keep speed above 60 millimeters per second Because for senseless homing, your printer must obtain a minimum required speed. So if we go back here, back to absolute, make sure everything is stopped before we reset the motor currents and then took, take them back. So really there's no difference here. Tenholt, welcome to being a member. Go back a few millimeters. Okay, so this is basically what I have up here, except for the, if you read in the docs, it shows 40% current and 70% on Y. So try lower the M19 so the motors stall easier. You read in the docs, it shows 40% current. It shows 70% current. It shows 70% current in here. Oh, for another example, would compare 40% and 70%. Oh. Red just over the three, adjust G1. I would try to help, but my only rep rep is with an SKR. That's fine. Um, we can still work with what it is, I think. Um, I, I mean, we can, here, let's get rid of this. Cause this is, this is basically what I have. The only thing it does is do a, do an extra little movement. And you know why I just use end stops? Well, I don't have that choice here. So let's get rid of this. And we're gonna go, it's, we're gonna keep our, what, where is our speeds? To keep things simple, 
Let's go 4,000 on both moves. I don't know why. I just picked that number. And we're going to see what this does now. Let's save that. Let's go to our console and disable motors. Go to dashboard. Let's see what this does. Home X. Okay. So that is now with all those changes. We're going to do it, but I gave up on senseless homing and I never got it to work. The hardest thing to set up. That's fine. We can, we can work through this. So that was too sensitive. So now let's go in and just start working the, pro working, working through the values. Let's turn the motors off. So with our current currents and speeds and everything, it's too sensitive. So. I can go in and change this to another too sensitive. So do I need to go more? Positive. Let's just increase this about 20 at a time. Dashboard, home X. There we go. That's better. That's better. Now a little bit, a little bit, um, not sensitive enough. So let's reset. So let's go down to say 15. That was 20. That was a value of 20. to dash and home X. That's an interesting shift there. I think it's still a little, a little um, too sensitive. 11, 11 is the answer. Okay, let's do 11. Okay, we turn off the motors, go back to system. Cause that was 15. So let's try chamois 11. Let's move it over. Omex. It's shifting in Y though. So that's still a little too sensitive. If not 11, it's eight. We should be going back and forth and narrowing in on a value. Ooh, over 400 people. Nice. Okay, go back to home X. Let's go eight. Just because Shammy said. Home X. Still a little, little too strong. Yep. Okay. Back, go to system, home X, let's go five. Hey, Philip. Yeah, I didn't even read your comment yet, Ajax. Okay, so home X, this is five. Yeah, it's still, what is that shift? Is that still too, too strong? That like button and subscribe. Probably already asked, but what duet board is being used? The um, Mini Five Plus. It is being it is being reduced, Ella. It's fifty percent. It's being reduced fifty percent right now. I don't know that that's as much as it should be reduced, but we're gonna go three now on this on the sensitivity. I want, I, I, I want to go down enough to where it changes significantly. Oops, let's change the, disable the motors again. So this is, this is three. It's not supposed to be doing the retract and bouncing back. Oh, what did that do? I didn't pay that much attention. Was that correct? 
Let me do it again. Hey, Brian. Yeah, it should be, but um, let's let's look here. Let's look here. So that was three. I'm going to redo it at three, but it should be moving X at least 130 millimeters, which is greater than the travel. And then it's supposed to go back. Well, that says X5. Go back a few millimeters. X5 is the wrong direction. Yeah. That should be minus five. Minus five. And it is in, in, in Nurgleroth's example, it is a minus two on that one. I'm gonna go minus, minus five so we see it better. And then it does it again. So that, that, um, that command there is wrong. I think that would explain the volume. So let's see what that looks like. Um, all of the, all the rest is the same. Let's go back here. Home X. Well, now it's too sensitive. Now it's too sensitive. So let's go, let's go back and change that. Let's go to system. And home X. Let's go back to, let's see if, it, I mean, we're going to go kind of the other direction. I want to see what it looks like when it's, when it's two. I went to eight. So I went from three to eight, which is still a pretty large bump. So let's home X again. Okay. So it is triggering. You see it go back, but then it's taking longer to trigger on the second move. Why is it doing that? We need more. So it needs to be let, let's let's shift it again. Go back and go to home X. Let's go to 15. I want it to be Oops. Console disable the motors. So this is 15. So I keep hitting the wrong button. There we go. That's better. That's better. Okay. So let's do that again. Let's do that again. And now I'm going to watch this closer. So if we home X, Okay, it's still shifting Y, which means it's it's not um, sensitive enough. So let's go in and change. We're getting we're getting closer. We're narrowing down. I bet eleven is still closer. Well, we'll try eleven. Here, we go down here to. Oops, that's not the one. one. X. That was fifteen, which is not sensitive enough, I think, at this point. So let's try eleven. Save. Go back and move it back here. And now let's home. It's still shifting. It's doing that shift. Steve defeated Rep Rep Firmer Senseless Homing. <laughs> We're close. I don't, it's, it's shifting in Y um, at some point, which means it's not sensitive enough. Um, so we'll go back and just keep doing it. This is, this is just what it takes. This is what it takes on Clipper as well. You go back and forth until you find the value and you tweak your currents and you tweak your speeds and until you get something that's going to work. And if you have 5160s on a, on a Clipper, your, your value is one because zero is too sensitive and two is not sensitive enough or vice versa, whatever. <laughs> it's shifting Y on the second bump, I think it is. Try to lower the current a bit. 
to 45, then the motor will have easier misstep and trickier to stall. Um, I'm going to try narrowing down between if I can't find a value here, I will. That's the next thing. If you can't find a value that's going to work well, then you need to adjust something else. Um, but I want to get to that point where I've, I've tried cause eight and 11 were at that point where it's in, in between. Right? So I only have a few more values to try. Um, um, so before I completely lose track. 11 was too much, so we got to go 9. 9. And home X and see what this does. Okay, so that's too sensitive. So 8 was too sensitive, 9 was too sensitive, 11 wasn't sensitive enough. So if 10 um, doesn't work, then we need to adjust something else. I think it's always an integer. So if 10 doesn't work, then we need to try something else to get into that sweet spot, which like you said, we'll, we'll adjust the motor current and see where we're at. And we have to go through all this again. Um, yep. Okay. So let's go back in here and go to home X. I mean, we've got this basically on, on track of working. So, 10, if this doesn't work well, then we need to go. Yeah, if 10 is an issue, start dropping current by five. Yep. Um, that way you widen your, widen your, you're basically, if you reduce the current, then you're gonna widen the, 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 the value that could work, widen the range. rip out the second bonk you really don't you, you actually i don't know that you need it we don't use it in um in clipper and we're not worrying about super precise homing either if you were worried about super precise homing i think it's probably a good idea okay i just changed that i am back um let me make sure i changed it it is 10 yep let's go back here and home X. Now it's still shifting. Let me make sure I'm not doing something else that's causing that shift in Y. Because that doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem like a shift because it's over traveling. It seems like an intentional shift. Let's look at the, let's look at the config again, just to make sure there isn't something weird going on here. Yeah, there's no Y movements. So why is it moving? Why is it moving? Why is it moving and why? Here, let me, let me do this. Let me do a move, a, a homing here. Let's do it again here. Um, why am I not there? There we are. Um, Stall rate being picked up differently by each motor. That seems weird. Um, let me let me show the homing here. Go to console and turn off the motors again. Move this right here, um, off to center. Okay. Oh, um, I, I messed something up. Give me a second. Nope, 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 nope. That's not what I wanted. There we go. I changed that for something. I changed that when I did the West 3D, um, when I did the West 3D stream, because I had to use that camera. Um, okay, let's go in and home this now. See that, that move, it seems intentional. It doesn't seem like something as a result of over travel. Mm -mm. The belt tensions are even. Homing retract distance zero. That's not a thing in RepRap firmware. 
now dear now we can tell it not to retract we can absolutely do that but that that particular command isn't going to work lowering the speed is going to change the the sensitivity values There is no Y sensorless settings yet. We're only doing X at this point. No, nope, no worries, Nadir. It does it right after the first bump. If we go in, if we go in now, and go to Homer X and we remove this. That's not what I wanted. That should be that. Um, and that, that removes the second bump. Let's save that. Let's try to home Y. I haven't set up Y yet. Okay, so we'll do this again. So now I remove that second bump and home X. Yeah, that's perfect. Let's leave it. Let's not do the second bump. <laughs> What's happened on my 2.4 after I belt slipped one tooth? No, that's... It's not shifting there. So now let's apply all of this to Y and then tune Y. So if I go into system and I have a home X and I have a home all, I need, oh, that's not what I wanted. Can I copy this? No. So let's edit this and copy all of this. And close it and create a new file. Um, new file home y dot g and paste paste this here and now we're going to do the same drop the motor currents we're going to have a new sensitivity but we're going to leave it right now we want to still do the we don't need to do the do we want to do the z movements in here bill brothers thanks for the gifted memberships we might want to move these z movements to the home all no because if you want to home them individually that's fine Okay, now we want to go Y. We're going to move Y to max. And that should all be all we have to change. Mm, polymaker filament. What's the question there, Nadir? So I put the number there for my own record keeping. It's the 50th time. Actually, it's the 51st. Uh, but it's the 50th time I've given away Polymaker Filament, the single roll Polymaker Filament on a stream. I didn't count, the, the celebration giveaway isn't counted in that number now. Oh, I see. That makes sense, Lando. It's It doesn't have enough travel speed to get up um, to do the second bump. Apex Peppers? No, it's not 50 rolls. <laughs> it's the 50th time. You should change the other X3130 in case you use it, even though it's commented. Why? You're talking about these. There we go. Just in case I use them. That's a good idea. Okay, so if we save this now, and I'm going to go back, and we're going to start with all motors disabled. And let's see how this does. Thanks, Nargorok. I got that. I got your message. Um, if we go here now in home Y. Oh, okay. So that value for Y is too sensitive. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go back into system and 
go to our home Y and S10 is too sensitive. So let's go um, 20. And go back here. I think this is the better view for seeing this anyway. And home Y again. Oh, that shifted a little bit. So that's probably not sensitive enough. Really cast you on one polymaker deal last Sunday. Thanks for the stream. Awesome. Awesome. There was a ton. <laughs> I mean, Nick, Nick from Polymaker was te I don't know if he was teasing. I think he was serious that that sale ate into their Black Friday supplies. Okay, so let's go to back to the back to the system, home Y, and change this. That's a little too sensitive. So let's go 15. And save. How many likes from that stream? Um, that stream got is currently at 888 likes. One. Dislike. <laughs> there's usually one person. The most common number for dislikes is one. So there's somebody out there that doesn't like what I do and is and is persistent about it. <laughs> is tuning senseless homing on clipper similar? Yes. Um, I think it's slightly more painful on clipper to tune for this part, for this part of senseless homing, I think it's a little more painful on clipper. Um, or you have to know a little more, you have to know what command to input into the console to make your tweaks. Otherwise you have to go in and save your config every time. Um, where was I? I was at 15. Um, we're going to try that now. So I need to go back and just say turn on motors and we'll try this again. Plot twist. Steve dislikes his own video after he's done. <laughs> okay. Home Y. Okay. So that's still not sensitive enough. So 15 is not sensitive enough. 10 was a little too sensitive. So let's go 12. Um, so if I go back here. Or Steve, hear me out. It could be someone messing with the numbers. You have no idea why anyone would have the audacity. It's like your streams. Hey, John, welcome. Um, so let's try 12. What in the world did I hit? Oh, I hit I hit F1 instead of <laughs> the two. Save. Hey, are you kidding? Welcome. Don't forget to back off a little after homing. It will shift. Yeah. I think I'll do that in my home all. Um, file. Okay, sorry. I need to get back on track here. Let's do another M84. And move this back. This is at 12. So go back to the dash and home Y. It's still a little, little sensitive. Um, let's go back. If 11 doesn't work, then we need to look at lowering the current, right? Because then we're a little, a little too, um, yeah, I need to go 11. Save, console, turn off the motors, move this back. This is 11. Home Y. 
And now I'm going to double check and see if 10 is still off or am I, am I getting lost in the numbers now? Does it go to 11? Apparently. I'm just going through and making these changes real quick. <sighs> Leave the doors open. Oh, that's a response to someone else. And clunk of senseless homing on movie zero. Hey, Joshua. Okay, home wide. This is back to 10. Yep. So 10 is too sensitive. 11 isn't sensitive enough. So now we need to go in and probably reduce our motor currents and see if we can tune this in to a, a, a more appropriate number. Now that probably means I can widen my range on X as well. Um, I'm just gonna reduce these evenly, which means we're gonna have to retune X. Um, it might've, in that case, it might be better to tune Y first, save a little time. But if we go back to home here and we're gonna reduce our current here and let's go 10%. I know I, know I was suggested to go 5% increments but let's do that and see what if, and we're just gonna leave the sensitivity alone right now. I would set S10 and then boost the current. I would set the S10 and then boost the current a bit. Am I thinking wrong? I would set the S10 and then boost the current a bit. What drivers? These are um, 2209s. Hey, Daniel, welcome. I think I want to reduce the currents to widen my range, right? I'd tune M201.1 now, but I, where's the documentation on M201.1? I didn't see it in the sensorless docs. So if that's a new thing, if it's not documented, I'm not going to cover it here. If it is, then let me know where it is. Okay, I'm going to go with this plan. This is what we were talking about before. Let's see what happens. So we've, I've, I've reduced the current. Let's see how that impacts the current value of 10. Um, okay, let's see how, let's just, let's just tune this in. I'll look at the 201. Um, look at that, the, the G code directory dictionary. Um, but right now let's, let's go to the other end of not sensitive enough and see what this looks like. So I'm going to go back into here and home Y and let's go 15, 15 and No idea if it's more difficult with Rip Rip firmware. I don't think it's more difficult. This is the same type process in both. Okay. So with that, that, that 10% would seems to me now to have been a significant difference in, in impacting the sensitivity values, reducing the motor current by 10%. Um, I might've wanted to go five, but let's just see where this takes us. Let's go and let's go a little higher. Oops, 25. Home oh Y. Oh, significant, significant difference. Let's go. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go a lot because I want it to. I want it to change. So I'm going to go 45. I want it to be not sensitive enough at this point. Need to do a VZBot water cooled upgrade collab. <laughs> so, um, that was 45. 
69. 69. That was awfully close. It's still, it's, it's too, it's not sensitive enough at this point, but it didn't shift, right? Am I right? That didn't shift. That's somewhat a bummer. The sensor list doesn't work in spread cycle with rep rep firmware. Oh yeah, that is, that is weird, huh? There, there's a, there's a piece in the documentation that says that notes that though. Um, let's go back and look at that again. This is 69. Yeah, that's really close. From my experience with senseless homing, lowering the driver current by 40% prior to homing has always helped. It's at 40% right now, Brian. That's exactly where it's at right now. Um, let's go 66 or 60 and see what happens. Let's go 60. Save. This is at, this is at 60. Oh my. No, still, still not sensitive enough. Let's go and do 50. And I don't need to go back and do X again. It, I can leave its values. And home white at 50. That's getting better. It's not as big of a bump. Trinamic evaluation kits have back EMF visualization tools. Okay, so 50 was closer, but not, um, not sensitive enough. Let's try 45. We did 42 already, right? Okay, home Y. That's really close. I'm gonna keep going down. We, I thought we already tried 42. I thought I already tried 42. Add an extra fan for chamber ventilation. No, we did 45. Um but it wasn't sensitive enough on 45. Let's try 42. Okay, this is 42. This is before you lowered the power, you tried 42. Well, to be honest, the numbers start blurring. <laughs> hey, Bruno. But we're really close. 42 is actually a little much still. 42 is not the answer in this case. Let's go 38. It's still looking okay. I mean, it's still, it's still a little tiny much. Thirty-two. That's pretty close. Let's see. Right, the stealth chop issue is a TMC thing, not a firmware thing. Stall guard only works in stealth chop on a twenty-two oh nine. But you don't. We run we run sensorless homing and spread cycle on Clipper unless it's doing something in the background of changing it to stealth chop while it's homing. Okay. That is, we can continue to, to lighten that and finding the balance, but you've seen the process. We're at a point where this is going to work. So I don't want to take more stream time, 
but you you iterate through that until until you find values that work. <coughs> nope, wrong wrong cup. Let's switch to the next one. I think Clipper changes it for sensorless. Yeah, it's it's very possible. I I don't know that though. Okay, now I need to, so what is our typical home Z? Let's go, I don't think I have a home Z right now. So we wanna, we're gonna get a home Z. So what should my home Z um, setup look like? I think it's, it's not sensorless, it's an end stop. Um, uh, if I go to the config tool, the, this is the config tool. Um, I don't have, I saved my, my previous settings. How do I get those back? Now let's go. Um, what was it? There's a JSON file. Here it is. Config tool. How do I import that into the config tool? So there's possibility then ref rep firmware could possibly implement something similar. Rep rep firmware does do the switching. So I'm, we can switch between spread cycle and stealth chop just for the sensorless homing. Yes. Um, how do I import my setup, my previous setup. Just open the JSON in the in the browser. No. <laughs> Check under introduction. Introduction. Ah, there we are. Thank you. Thank you. Load config template. Stream. Refer up firmware. JSON. There we are. Okay. So where we where we left off last time. So I think there was a spot in here where we should can show the G code for homing, right? It gave us some homing. Where was that? Don't forget that step. Which step? Did you change your amps back to normal after homing? Yes. Yes, the end of those homing macros had... Um, had that. Where... I thought there was a, a homing examples in the config. First tool, configure custom settings and config. Heaters, sensor, end stops. Is this? No, that's just that. Gotta go taking my daughter on a daddy daughter date. Awesome. Have fun, John. wasn't here was it now um oh there was one with a wasn't there one with a and stops home alt there we are that's what i was looking for so so if you look at the g-code preview this is kind of a neat feature now we found some weird things about this configurator being that it's in beta um i still need to report that one where it had the command it was putting it in the wrong spot in the, in the config.g. 
but if you look at the um, G code preview, it has um, config the G code here. So if we go home Z now, if we scroll down here to home Z, this is our basic calculate how far Z can travel. Oh, that's interesting. So if we take this, this can be our basis for, um, for our home Z.G file. So if we now come back over here and we create a new file, home Z.G. Now, this says it's going to calculate how far Z can travel plus five millimeters with that command. It's going to set this and then it's going to should do that. And that should be all we need to do, right? Let's find out. Let's see what it does. Let's save. Now, if we go to this is going to be better to see from the other camera. So here. So this should home to Z max, trigger the end stop and go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually trigger this for the very first one. So I'm going to, I'm going to say home Z and then I'm going to trigger it with, the, with the thing and make sure that the end stop is being recognized. I'm using an end stop. It's a, it's a micro switch at the bottom here. So. Okay, so it's trying to go to Z min. What do I need to change to? Let's go to our system. Oh, and is that moving in the right direction? Um, how do I here? Let's go. Let's go back. Let's go to the dash and let's just do a Z move. So Z plus five. Let's make sure it's even moving in the right direction. I don't think we checked that before. So yeah, that's Z plus five. So it's moving in the right direction. It's homing in the wrong direction. <coughs> so it, that's minus five. That's minus five at a time. So let's now go into the home Z file. And now it is going, we need to do course home in the minus Z direction. We want to go in the plus Z direction. So I think we can just do that, right? Get rid of the, get rid of that. Let's find out. Now I know that the end stop works, so I don't need to trigger it by hand now. If I on Z, here we go. Okay, so now at the end there, it tried to, uh, I've got another uh, uh, thing I need to change. So at the end, it tried to do um, the fine home, but it moved positive um so this i need to change the the directions here there we go minus five and then it moves until the um it triggers again yeah so i need to invert invert the bump so save that um <coughs> excuse me go back to the console Disable the motors again. Just manually move this up a bit. Okay, so do that. Now I can home Z again. There we go. Whew. Homing in all axes individually complete. So awesome. Oh, 
there's no there's no stop if i hit plus 50 it's gonna it doesn't it doesn't know that it's at max travel where's the max travel set Hmm. Where are we at? <laughs> Where is Max Travel set? Did we set that in here? Let's um let's hide that G code. In our axes, we have maximum travel here. Why did it not set why did it not prevent me from? Yeah, X maximums. The M208 command. Oh, shoot, sorry. I'm in the configurator. I'm in the configurator because I know I can find that in the in the G-code preview. So in our axis setup, we set our max travel of 120 millimeters, right? So when we go to show the g-code preview i see it says x set axes maximum is 120 millimeters so the m208 command if i go over here and look and make sure that m208 command is there in config.g m208 is set to 120 millimeters now why am i able to tell it to move beyond that isn't that the whole point what am i missing Look at M574 and config G and look at the G code dic dictionary. Make sure you are homing to max. That's a good call. So look at the M574. So if we look in here and five M574. Ah, here we are. Configure Z axis and stop. So if we look up M5, oh, let me, let me. So M574 for the Z axis is right here. This is where we're telling it that we have, this is the end stop. Um, let's look at the G code dictionary and M574. Okay, so So the Z position of end stop should be two. So um, Z parameters, Z position of Z end stop, it should be Z two. And these should be also X two and Y two because we're homing to the max of everything. Um, let's look at what we have. So so Y2, yep, so that's that's the problem. Thank you. So this should be, we're homing to the max of Z. Now, does that still work? Let's save and let's restart it. It did not know that the Z home was at the max. That's That was the problem. Move these things out. This is going to restart. And now we're going to home Z. Now, if I, and I'm going to go here, if I say Z plus 50, it should give me an error. Yep. Okay. So I don't know if it's an error, but it just doesn't do anything. So awesome. Thank you. It does know it now. It's, so if I go Z minus 50, it's moving. Only 34 more likes and we've got, oh, we got half an hour, only half an hour until the giveaway. Wow, today has gone by. Um, yep. Nice, thank you. This is similar to bed screws adjusting clipper. Have you set the Z home location? Yep, everything is set now. So now we need to tie all this together in the home all. So, 
if we go to the system and go to home all dot G. Oh, what is this? Oh, this is the, this is all of the, this is what we copied from the, um, from the configurator. We're going to delete all this and we're going to basically tell it to call home X, home Y and home Z. So I'm going to go and cheat and grab the notes that, um, Nurgleroth gave me in, in the discord chat. And I think unless someone can, unless you tell me this is not the best way to do this. So I'm going to paste this here. Um, I think I want to do a, I want to in within this command, I want to back off on X and Y before it homes the next axis. So I wanted to home G and then in this command, I want to put a command to, to move X off from max by 10 millimeters or whatever. Then I wanted to home call home Y and then I wanted to pull back and then I wanted to call Z, right? Hey, Dusto. Two and a half hours on sensorless. It, it is what it is. <laughs> hey, Rodney. Washed in cold water. It is. So the, the bed here is a regular Voron bed, but the Mandela Roseworks um, plate that I'm using is a little oversized. Move to center a bed or whatever you call in the home before you call in home Z. Yeah, but, but I, I, I've heard, and I, I think somewhere it's documented, and maybe it's not needed or whatever, but you don't want to home the next axis one, with one axis already at max. Is that, is that valid? Is that a, hey, Jack Black. Um, the Roseworks plate has been working fine for me. I've got it on two of my V-Zeros. Um, I have two of my V-Zeros are LDO kits, so they have the, uh, the LDO bed, but these, Julie, these V-Zeros are the most useful printers because especially when you're doing computer or printer parts and stuff, it's often that I just need a little small part really quick. <laughs> um, so... I should, here, let me close this. Um, I want to make sure I get this right. I want to go to a G91 and then a G90. So let's go to home Z. Oh no, home all. Paste this, I probably want to go G91 and then G zero X minus 10 and then G 90, right? Or I could go, um, I could instead go leave it in abs absolute positioning and put this at the middle of the bed, um, 60 and then, oops. And then when Y is done, leave it in absolute and go G zero Y 60. And then it'll home G and I can go G zero Z 20. And that should work, right? And save. So if I go here now, oh, I didn't show any of that. I'm sorry. Here, I'll, I'll do it, see if it worked. And then we'll go fix it if I find out it doesn't. So now the home all should do everything. Home all. Oop. So what happened there is X is now too sensitive. And it triggered early. Mm -hmm. 
So, so what happened there is X triggered early. It did all its thing and then it moved to what it thinks is 60. Now I had it positioned correctly that it didn't end up grinding anywhere. Um, then it did proper sequence for Y and then Z. Hey Luke, but that's okay. We're not, we're not too far off here. Let's go back. And now let's see what's going on with, let's see what's going on with, let's see what's going on with X. Let's just, oops, I should probably just go right back here and let's just home X and see what happens. Yep, yeah, it's, it's too sensitive. I don't know why it's suddenly too sensitive now. Um, let's find out. Hey, Jantech. Um, let me make sure I'm not moving anything. Hey, Polar Ted, welcome. It's Z that the problem, you don't want Z at max when you call X or Y because Z drops in relative mode. It's Z... Let me read that. It's Z that's the problem. You don't want Z at max when you call X or Y because Z drops in relative mode. I only lowered the current for Y. I left it with on X. Um, let me make sure. Yeah, we left it at X because we had a good value that was working. We didn't do anything else. We're returning the currents to 100%. Oh, that doesn't actually show, does it? I didn't, I didn't lower the currents when it's homing X though, Kevin. I only did it when it's, when it's um, homing Y. Now this, this was too sensitive. So let's just go, let's just change that and see if we can get this going. Right, it, it, it is Core XY and uses both uh, motors for each. And we're lowering the current for both motors in each macro. It's just when it's homing X, we're not lowering it as much as when we were homing Y. Right, it uses both, but they're different macros that are being run. So it's moving them to, it's, yeah. Okay, let's see if 15 does it. Let's just do a home X. Wow, that's interesting. Why is that so different already? What I'm am I missing something? I'm just I just went in and changed it to 25. That's good enough. It stopped without without too much drama. I I know it's using both motors. It's okay. They're different macros, so they're complete, treated separately. Hey, Andres. See you, Kevin. Oh, 10 away from 300. Awesome. In 25 minutes till a giveaway. 335 people here. Wow. Um, okay, let's, go, let's do a full home. Let's do a full home now. And then we can move on. Home all. Down. Home X. That's a little harsh. I might change the sensitivity on that. Oh. <laughs> now Y is not sensitive enough. <laughs> That's interesting. Why? Why? <laughs> okay, let's go and tweak, tweak, tweak it. So you see these, there's, there's different, uh, you can't really see that. There are separate files for homing X and Y. If we look at Y now, see this is, this is reducing the current by 40% for X and Y evenly. Um, this is too sensitive now. So we're gonna go to, let's just go 40. I want to do this once if we can. Save that. Essentialist. <laughs> Essentialist drives me crazy. 
Um, we can live with this being slightly harsh and being reliable. It's fine. Um, there's no nothing we have to target. So I'm hoping that's there. But to, to, to folks points before, now if we look at home X, you see how I've, I've changed the current with both X and Y, but 50. So it's completely separate, but it's still adjusting current on both X and Y when I do this. So anyway, back to the console, back to here and go back to the dashboard and we will do this again. Home all. Okay. I didn't hit it enough. <laughs> Maybe configure both to the same values. A little over is better than that, or yeah. Um, I need to go back in. I'm going to change that Y to 50. Um, I can just go ahead and home all, home all again. And that's a little harsh now because it shifted. There we go. That's a little harsh, but it's doing it. And I'm going to, I'm going to fine tune it later. All three axes macros and the home all had to have the weight command inserted. Otherwise, some commands are... So the M400? So, Jack, and if Nurgle Rod or Lonmo can confirm, should I have put in my home all... And Well, here. Home G and home Y... Here, before I do that... These both have, Home X has an M400 at the beginning and end. M400 are at the beginning of end of Home X. Home Y has an M400 at the beginning and end. So it's waiting for everything. Now Z doesn't, but we're not having problems with Z. I mean, I can put a, I can put an M400 here. And an M400 here. Yeah. So. Thanks, darkness. Okay. It's working. It's homed. It moves around. It can use some fine tuning. But we spent two hours and 40 minutes. Well, we did some other things too, but. Um, okay, what is next on commissioning? It's a safeguard, it doesn't really matter. I don't have the M400 and Home Z either, yeah. It'd be curious what's causing that to have changed there. Um, it'll, it'll end up being tuned again when I enclose it and the chamber is hot as well all these values change in clipper too clipper has the same i mean it's using the same systems so okay check end stops end stops are now checked <laughs> reconfigure end stops you found that any end stops are not configured properly let's check the stepper motors before Check the stepper. Well, <laughs> we, we've checked the stepper motors as part of that. The V0.2 only has sensorless homing for X and Y, correct. There are no more provisions for, for hard end stops. Okay. So checking stepper motors. We could change the direction on them um, when the M560... Oops. 
in the M569 command. Um, all this, check system, all this, all the distance moved, everything is correct. I mean, we, we kind of checked distance moved because I told it to move to the middle of the bed and it's in the middle of the bed. I have not leveled my bed. I haven't gotten, I, ugh, that might be the, that might be an extreme thing. Um, cause I want to use just because he gave me one, um, Chuck Hellebuck's little, little device because to do the, 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 the bed tramming extruder direction is a good, a good question. Um, that is a good, good call extruder direction. Let's see, can we see things here? I don't think I can see. I think I might just have to put some filament in there. And... Oh, is there a force? How do I force extruder to be able to move without heating it up? Is there a way to do that? Z probe, panel do, commissioning complete. There is no Z probe. There is no panel do. M302. So M302. Let's see. M302. Allow cold extrudes. Awesome. This page. Okay. So M302. This command can be used without any additional parameters. Cold extrude allow state. Minimum extrusion temperature. Okay. Awesome. Hey, you 3D reel. Welcome. The backside looks so empty. So this is going to get a little um, NeoPixel board that's going to get installed here. And that's what's going to control all the NeoPixels on the on the thing. Um, it won't probably be part of this series. That's what this wire here is, is the NeoPixel signal wire um, from the from the tool head board. It won't be part of this series, but it'll be... Um, It'll be later. Um, M302 allows cold extrudes. So let's go back here and let's go up to the console and run in M302. Cold extrusion is forbidden. Use M302 P1 to allow it. Okay. P1. Okay. <laughs> what kind of pressure advance numbers do you see with a Bowden like that? I haven't run one in a while, so I don't know. Ask me in a few weeks. Yeah, Nurgle, we should set up the filament switch. If you can post some info on that, that'd be awesome. I'll keep an eye on the chat. Um, I have not mounted the NeoPixels on the Mini SB, but I plan to. Um, I have some, the little lights for the, for the nozzle light. Um, we need to check the extruder direction though. Let me grab some filament. Um, just some, some filament here. Oops. Um... I have to find the NeoPixels I ordered. And then two just don't know how to mount them. Glue. Yeah, I think it I think it is glue. I think it's just glue. I was looking at that. I think I'm going to have to do some off Sunday random streams as I get time and motivation, because there's a lot of things that I need to get caught up on. Okay, so if I push this through, I'm hoping to feel, yep, I can hear the switch, the filament sensor switch triggering. That's good. And then this is going to go all the way up to the, I'm gonna, yep, there we go. I'm going to just get it engaged with gear so I can feel this, what direction it's going. So I put some filament in 
And now I want to, I guess I want to just do a G zero E um, 20. I don't know. See if it moves. Um, F 1000. Let's see what happens. Maybe I grind filament. Attempting to extrude with no tool selected. Oh, no tool selected. You can't just do an E without a tool selected? Here, load filament. Let's see what happens. No filaments available. T0 selected. Nozzle. Oh, okay, it's backwards. <laughs> It's backwards. Run a T zero. Okay. Well, I, I, I clicked on it, but it is backwards. It's running backwards. So that's our, that's our basic test there. Um, the, the extruder is moving backwards. Put a T zero at the bottom of the config G so you don't have to do it again. Awesome. That is what I will do. That's something, I guess that's, that's part of the, Part of the difference in RepRap firmware, that's an example of it doesn't do things for you because it's super flexible, right? Um, so to fix that right now, all we should have to do is go down here. That M501 can be at the very end, but T0 is just going to by default on this config. Oh, and... Um, there we go. By default on this config, putting the T0 here down at the bottom is going to enable that tool every time it starts up. So if I save that and restart it. Yeah, it doesn't assume anything. <laughs> you have to tell it everything. It doesn't assume how to home. You have to tell it how to home. And I would like, I need to do some research on that disc almost full thing. Um, oh, and also I need to, I should have gone into config and the direction. So these are axes and our E axis extruders set extruder mapping, configure micro stepping, configure steps. So is it in a five? Where is it? If we go over to the config tool and look at the extruders. It doesn't tell us anything about direction. Which one, which command tells us direction? Was that in the M? Is that in the M584 or is it the... That's all it tells me there. What is M584? Oops, why did that do that? M584. There we go. is created one axis earlier in the config this is just driver numbers let's look at the m584 is a mapping configure micro stepping configure steps per millimeter which one is it for direction steps per millimeter uh, oh it's in the commissioning machines oh this would have been in here that's right check end stops configure end stops check stepper motors 
check the operation, reversing. To reverse the direction of stepper motor, navigate to file system and open the config.g. Look for M569. M569 is not in there. Is it in anywhere? Oops, M569. Here we go. Smart derivers, M569, and extruder goes forward. So we'll, we change this to S0 goes backwards. There we go. M569 is the command we wanted. So save that and restart. <sighs> and get back here. We have nine minutes till giveaway time. We are over 300 likes. Good job. Good job. Go back to the console. I need to run the, does this have a memory? Oh, there we are, M302P1. Okay, and now I can go to dashboard. Can I extrusion control? Ah, so let's go 20 at five millimeters per second and extrude. There we go. Now it's going in the right direction. Okay, so now I'm gonna retract this to get it out of here. Okay. So filament out, I'm gonna leave it here at the ready. Okay, M591 for the filament sensor. Let's look that up. Let's look that up. Anytime M591, configure filament sensing. Awesome, there's a whole little section here. You delete all the firmware files, you get some disk space back. Just delete it all. Okay, configure filament sensing. This command configures a given pin to read a filament sensor and configures filament monitoring for its corresponding extruder. The filament sensor may be a simple switch that detects the presence of filament or a sensor that measurements the filament motion. So, In RepRep firmware 3.4 and later, the action on a filament error is to raise a filament error event. So here, M591, 3. Point whatever. So parameters is extruder drive number. So D0. So M591 D0. Type of sensor here. So let's go in here. Um, let's go into system and our config.g and where do we is there anywhere we need to define this probably after um extruders so let's do it here in the end stops m591 d0 if we go back to so d0 and then the p is the type of sensor so it is Yep, we're on the same page there, Norgal Rot. Good job. Um, hey, Dutch dude. You delete all the firmware before you get some do, do, do. P type of sensor. So I have a high signal when filament is present. Which one is this? Is this a is this a high or a low signal? This is a normally closed. It's set up for a normally closed. Um, so it's normally. When filament is present, it is low then. Yeah, so it should be a two, I think. So P2, D0, P2, I think. Um, and C is the name, pin name that the filament sensor is connected to. So C, and then where did we connect that? Um, do I have a, here we are. Maybe it's here. Um, where did we connect that? <laughs> I put the bottom panel on. 
Did I take a picture? Did I take a picture? Where did we connect that? Let me see if I took a picture. Does anybody remember where we connected it? Let me see. I don't think I took a picture. <laughs> okay. I want to go back two streams. So let me get my let me get my little setup here. Here, so we can watch me do this, do this live. Dunk. So nobody got to see, nobody got to see my, my, um, 1440 makers, um, playing card. Nobody got to see the 1440 makers playing card. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it because I thought it was funny. Um, so for the 1440 makers stream, they made playing cards for folks. And let me save this image. Um, sure. Let me see now. So for the 1440 makers, oh, is this gonna come up? Oh man, seriously? Why won't that? Hold on, let me. Um, how can I do this instead? Open image and new tab. Here we go. <laughs> that was my 1440 makers um, card. <laughs> I don't think it ever got posted. They had a lot of a lot of panelists. <laughs> so <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> okay, we are bottom panel. Which one did I set up? This is the, this is it right here. That's it right there. This is the Z. This is that one. Z is that one. So Z is IO zero, right? IO zero was what I set to Z. Let's find out. IO zero was, oh, um, And stop. Z was IO zero. So IO one in is the, let's go here. Let's copy that. And, oh, where did my, oh, it didn't save. Cause I closed it. It didn't save what I was already working on. Okay. So it's IO one. T minus two for the, oh, one minute till the draw. Okay. Take a picture now. <laughs> Good call. Let's do it. I would have still had to double check that because I didn't label them. Because I keep forgetting to label little things. Okay, let's put this back on and then um, we'll do the drawing. 
And then we'll finish up the filament sensor. So if you haven't entered, the link is in the description and the pin post. You have an extra, always an extra amount of time to enter. So don't forget. Get yourself in one of these days. For those that like to wait till the last second, I'm going to have a, an actual three seconds. But you'll never know when. Okay, let's get that aside and let's do a drawing. So, um, did anyone watch the Starship launch? I did not. It is time for filament drawing. Um, I need to actually bring up a wheel of names. We are going to do a generic wheel of names. Here we go. Um, can someone explain what is 1440 makers? Uh, exactly what it is, I'm not sure, but Shane, um, the real, the, um, Shane runs a, a charity, 24 hour charity stream. I think the last one was done about two or three years ago though. So anyway. Let me bring up the thing. When we have not had a new entry in three seconds, I will be closing the form. The link is in the description and, um, and pin post. No, Laura, it's just that I, I forgot to set up wheel of names before stream. That's all. <laughs> so I am going to count down from three. Once I haven't had a new entry, I'll be closing it and then we'll do the draw. So three, Two. Oh, there's a new one. Three. Timing how I, how long the three seconds is this time. <laughs> Wait, hurry up. You can get it in there. 42. Um, so three, two, one and a half. Oh, there's a new one. Three. Oh, there's a couple new ones. See, I'm making people happy. I, 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 people get in there and then we, we get it done. And so three, oh, there's a new one. Three, there's a new one. Three, there's another new one. Three, two, one. Oh, there's one. <laughs> three, two, oh, three, two. One, I'm called. All done. <laughs> um, just in. Awesome. So let me export this. Time's up. Six hours later. Was that a new record? Eight restarts? Nah, I'm sure I've done it more. One minute and five seconds. Okay, Tuxedo, you got the very first entry. Who who got in there at the last second? Hungo, Hungolian, Hungolian got in last. Awesome. Okay, let's paste these in. Like I said, one of these days I'm gonna go three, two, one, done. It'll be the fastest three seconds on the stream record. And wow, we've got almost 400 people. 372. Okay, um, how many times are we going to shuffle this? Um, somewhere between, what do we got here? Let's go 1 in 20, because I don't have enough brain cells left to be creative. <laughs> 1 in 20. One in 20. I'm liking 13, so lucky number 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and spin. Remember, you gotta be here. You gotta speak up in chat within two minutes of your name being drawn. Misha 
Fedosiev, congratulations. You have won a spool of Polymaker filament. You have two minutes to say something in chat. Are you here, Misha? Misha, are you here? Congratulations. Just say something in chat. I'll see it. Someone will see it. If you tag me, it's easier. But you don't have to. All you have to do is say something. Misha. This is a new name I haven't seen. This is good. I'm also really, really pleased with the the way the giveaways went on, um, on the celebration stream. Almost everyone was around and everybody seemed excited. It was, it was really good. Misha, I think you should leave the number in the form. I need to, I, this last couple of weeks have been, have been hectic. Uh, there's a lot of things I need to get cleaned up. I'm going to add the number. I'm probably going to add the little rules and thing that people need to acknowledge. Um, yeah, there, that, that, that is something that's on my list to do. I like the number thing. Because that actually helped on the, on the celebration stream. The purpose of the number is to have a, an additional validation. So if someone accidentally doesn't put in their actual um, YouTube name or whatever, it doesn't mean that they they don't get it. If they give me that number, then I know it's them. <laughs> so, still not taggable. We're not seeing Misha. We got 15 seconds. For Misha to speak up, otherwise we get a Polar Ted Club member. I am building a V24. I am actively building a V24. Misha, I apologize, but we're going to have to re-spin. So we need a number between 1 and 10. We need a number between 1 and 10. One and ten. We're gonna do one. Close that. If your name comes up again and you happen to be here, then you're good. Shuffle and spin. <laughs> Who we got for the next Polar Ted Club member? Joe Rust, are you here? Joe Rust, you have two minutes to say something in chat. Joe Rust, congratulations. Two minute timer started. Joe Rust, are they taggable? We know that doesn't always matter. Joe Rust, they are taggable. Are they here? There you are. Congratulations, Joe Rust. You will get an email from me with further instruction. Let me make sure it looks like I have a good email address for you. And it does. And there's only one result. This is good. Awesome. Congratulations, Joe. You will get an email from me. If you are in the US and Canada, you'll get a, um, or Canada, you'll get a couple of coupons. One of them is for dollars off the Polymaker store and the other one is to get free shipping. I think it's $35. Um, I removed the dollar amount just in case it changes, but it's a coupon in any case and it's good for at least one roll of filament. Uh, if you're outside the US and Canada, then you get a long list, a pretty a wide selection you get to choose from to get mailed to you. See ya, Andres. And this is why I do the 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 giveaway at a set time and must be present to win is because it does get a little late and I don't want people to have an unknown time when this is going to happen. But I like to, I like to hear, I like to see who wins. Um, I like to see them here. Anyway, let's see. We are back on this. So this was a um, here, let's go back. And what one is it? 
Oops, let's end that. What was that? An M M591? What was the command? M591? Is that it? Yeah, configure filament sensing. Let's go back there. You set an alarm for drip draw time. Oh, yep, I'm unpinning it now. Thank you. What do we got? Okay, M591 configure filament sensor. So we have the M591 D0P2. That's where we need to be. M M591 D0P2. And then our C and then the pin name. So C quotes, oops, quotes io1.in and that's what we found when we flipped the printer over and then s is disable filament monitoring default enable filament monitor monitoring when printing from sd card to enable filament monitoring all the time s2 is reported in rep rep firmware RC1 and later only. Filament monitors accumulate calibration data where applicable even when filament monitoring is disabled. Do I just want disable filament monitoring as default? So I just want, do I want two? So S2, I think. It just enables it all the time and I'm running 3.5 RC1. So S2 I think is okay. And I think this is it, right? I enabled cold extrude. Okay. So that should configure the filament sensor. Restart. Hey Steve, I want some filament on the 10K stream. I wasn't sure if you sent emails yet. I did. Well, what filament did you did you buy? I haven't done all of the filament. All the polymaker stuff has gone out. I use S1 so it doesn't trigger non-printing moves like tuning your extruder, etc. Okay. S1. What is the difference then? Says one is enable filament monitoring monitoring when printing from SD card. S2 is enabling it all the time. Okay. So is it always printing from the SD card though? It must be S1. So let's take that advice and go S1. Where's my stops here? Weird. Save. <coughs> okay. It was Jesse. Okay. So the Jesse emails have not gone out. That's one of the, um, that's, and, and some, it's going to vary depending on what the price is, on whether you're going to get an email from me, you're just going to get an email from the vendor, or some combination. And I, I won't forget, Bruno. I've just been, I've been scattered. <laughs> is the SD card you're running using have partitions on it? Probably. Probably. I need to go through and check. Uh, apparently the default it comes with is like that. So, Okay. What is next? I think on commissioning, we're basically done because we don't have a Z probe and we don't have a panel due. So next we'll be doing these things. Extruder steps per millimeter. Is there a, is there a guide for that here? We don't really need it because we can 
Um, how am I going to do that, though? I think I can squeeze in there and do it directly. Okay. Let's do... Let's see if I have enough room here. I'm going to do extruder steps per millimeter, I guess. I'm going to do that by popping this, setting that out of the way, and next stream I need to win, I'm running out of ABS. Tesla type of person ahead of his time. Why is this? I turned off chat monitoring, chat moderation, because it's never a problem. And it's continuing to. Yep, there it is. Doop, doop. It's fed through. I want to kind of do this, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that's a straight enough shot. Actually, I want to. I want to take this. This guy here to force that to be extended that's a little clip and i want to take this right there lock that in and then cut this flush and then i should just be able to extrude and measure it huh what's that just drop the subject what subject I, I, I haven't been following, but if it's getting a little touchy, then we can keep keep going. We can move on to other things. Okay. Let's get this here. Try to get that little better, better view there. I've got the um, filament cut flush with the, with the coupler here, and then I'm just going to extrude however many... Uh, millimeters and measure it so if we go here we go back to the console and what is it down the what was the command to turn off the to cold extrude it was the m302 but p1 right yeah m302 p1 m p1 so cold extrude and then if we go to the dashboard and we're going to extrude 50, oops, one millimeters per second, 50 millimeters. Just super slow. There is no list. You pick an SKU for max. It seems you can, can get Galaxy ASA. Oh, okay. I, I have some vague understanding of what the EU process is, so. good that it is it works though okay so i'm gonna hit the extrude it should go 50 millimeters and then we'll measure it so i'm gonna make sure it doesn't get hung up so i'm gonna extrude and it's extruding now of course i did say one millimeter per second so this should take almost a minute <laughs> E-Steps does vary based on extruder tension, yep. But really, we're just, for the most part, we're getting somewhere close here, right? You're going to adjust your ultimate values in your slicer with your extrusion multiplier. I'm just making sure it doesn't hit something in, in the way here. Oh, is that done? Okay, so that should be 50 millimeters. That wasn't 50 seconds. 
but it's done. Maybe it was 50 seconds. Ugh. It really, it went 52. It went probably, probably 52. Okay, so. Well, I did, I did cut it. Well, yeah, that's true. I could cut it flush again, and then I get the same. <laughs> that's a good call. <laughs> that's a good call. Then I get the same, then I get the same, um, the same, whatever, the same offset from there. So if I hold this right there, I'd say I'm actually at like 52.5. So that was, that was better. I could get a better eye on it. Okay, so 52.5. So what is it? Requested. Is there a calculator out here? I requested 50. I got 52.5. Our value we're going to adjust here is in config. And it's here in the steps per millimeter for the extruder so it's here this is what we're going to adjust in the extruder side so welcome hoppy knacky maths does it use e-steps or rotation distance it uses um e-steps it uses steps per millimeter. There's one on your PC. Step first, he stole my idea. Divide the overage by 50. 52.5. 5 divided by 50 times 727.57. So should that be 763.95? Is that what that should be? Why isn't that? There we go. 63. I always forget which direction it goes. So I think if we save that and restart, we should be able to do this again. This will tell me if I went the right the right direction or not. Okay, so back to the console. Run the M302 P1. There we go. Then go to the dashboard and we're gonna extrude 50 at one and extrude. If this was a direct mount extruder, not Bowden, would you remove the nozzle? or push the filament through. I push very slow. I heat the nozzle to well over the temperature for the material, and then I extrude very slow. I don't go through the through bother um, removing the nozzle or whatever. Never done a Bowden setup. Everything I've ever had was direct. Harder to make, it is. This is pretty easy. I just got to let this finish. Finish extruding. I could have, since there's no resistance here, I could have let this extrude a lot faster. There's nothing I'm pushing it through. Okay, that is done. So same flush cut. Let's see if we got anywhere close to the, oops, I didn't actually show any of that. So I went the wrong direction. It, it, it went the wrong direction because we're longer. So it should have been 50 
divided by 52.5. And then what was my value here before? So now we, now we got to go the other way. So it's, this was, this was actually 50, 56, nope, 55. So 55 divided by 50, 50 divided by 55 times the current value. So that is, where is it? Down in extruder, 763.95. I always mix that up. I'm showing 694.5. And let's try this again. Save, restart main board. <laughs> I'll extrude this quicker because it doesn't as long as you're not in at risk of skipping steps it'll be fine I'll just do I'll do two <laughs> okay console let's go back here what is this M302 E1. Dashboard. Let's go two. And extrude. I'll do two. Okay. Let's see if I can get this. Can we get a focus? I'm not holding it exact, but that's really close. And, I, and I'm not holding it exact. There we go. That's a little better. And it's not really focusing, but there we go. We are there. We could probably do this a couple of times, get it fine tuned, but we can also fine tune that in the slicer. So that was the right direction to go. It's close enough. So <sighs> that can now let's retract that. Yeah. Is there, how do we check the state of the filament sensor? Can we check the state of that? Um, was that in this documentation? Additional, additional parameters, notes, to free a filament sensor's GPIO pin. Um, how do I check the state? M591D, D0? That tells me what the, that'll tell me what the, the thing is. Is that documented here at all? Configure filament sensor. No, oh, that's access point. I'm just looking, does it say, is there anywhere that says that's how you would check the state of it? Uh, connecting and configuring filament out sensors. This is the whole, this is the whole document on it. The M591 was telling how to do that. Connecting optimal filament present switch. Display the filament sensors parameters. Commissioning power on. 
run M591 D0 and check the sensor angle is reported. Okay, so there's our basics. So if I go here and go to console M591 D0, comes back and says simple filament sensor on pin enabled when printing from an SD card, output high when no filament, filament present, yes. So I've got that backwards apparently. So let's check this now. Let's put the filament in. Now it's triggered, I heard it. Now let's run this again. Okay, so filament present, no. So I have the logic on this backwards. So now we can go into the config and fix that. So if I go system and go to config and go down to our end stops, this was the which command. Um, <clears throat> filament sensor was, this was the type of sensor. I think it's the P1 is what it should be instead. So P1 and save. And restart. I hope this has been useful because it's obvious that I'm not super familiar with RipRap firmware, but we've kind of worked through every bit of the config. Let's go back. M91, 591, D0. So filaments. Yes. And if I run it again. No, there we go. Put it in, run it again. Yes, out, run it again. No, perfect. You tell me that I have no need or desire for RepRap firmware. Yeah, I mean, to each, there's definitely pluses and minuses to both. Let's, let's just keep it there. see all the different firmwares you're getting a, the perspective of someone that's not i'm not an expert i'm not here going through and saying this is exactly how you do it and this is the way it's going to work every time i'm learning here too so don't take my full experience here as as this is the best that it gets because it's not <laughs> okay got a little clip here that's in there I'm going to put this clip back on. Okay. Where are we at now? Now, Poity, are you still here? Yeah, Clipper is not a good option for CNC. That's the way it works is not conducive to CNC. What did you say about the three point bed leveling you were trying to say earlier? Because I think that's kind of the next thing is I need to set my Z offset. I saw you said something earlier about. Just stabbing and poking at stuff until they work. Yep. <laughs> With some foundational knowledge, right? Some foundational experience um i think we can look at let's go back we're done with stall detection so let's go here um let's go bed leveling um we're not independent z let's look at using the manual bed leveling assistant what is this help level the bed manual bed leveling assistance and auto bed level we're not using auto, so let's do the manual bed leveling assistance. Am I am I in the same spot that you just posted? Is there any other YouTuber that does rep rep firmware? Um, Tom San Ladder's V2 build series live streams was with rep rep firmware. Um, who else has done much? Someone else will mention other examples.
Do you need a probe for this? Okay, let me see what, what Poity has here. What are you linking me, Poity? Well, that's fun. What? Oh. Yeah, stupid. Using the man. Oh, that's where I just was. <laughs> um. Let me see. Is there any good? I think. Do, 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 do. Chris Riley has a few videos. Okay. Let's look through here. Sped leveling using mesh. No, that's not what we want. Other. Oh, that's other guides. This feature is implemented in firmware 1.19, and you must have a better gantry that is leveled by three or four adjusting screws. Three screws is best, though on a very large bed, four screws may be needed. Your Z probe must be correctly defined and calibrated. I don't have a Z probe. Don't have a Z probe. So this isn't going to work. Does anybody have any suggestions how we would do this in... I know it says it's adjusting the screws, but. Okay, let's let's look at this a little closer. You must use the M6671 command to define the X and Y coordinates of the adjusting screws. These coordinates will usually be outside the normal printing area. I'm gonna set up a bed.g file in the usual way. Let's look at the M671. I got a dry spot in my throat. Let me see if I can clear this up. <clears throat> we'll see how this goes. <laughs> We're basically going to do a normal paper level napkin, but I'm hoping for a sequence that will <clears throat> help us with that. Okay. M671. Define positions for Z pivot points or bed leveling screws. So I think we need to start there. Um, these coordinates will usually be outside. The M671 command must come after any any M667 or M669 commands in config.g. So let's let's define an M671 first. So let's go into our here. Let me let me clean up some of these other um tabs that I don't need anymore. So I have them right next to what I'm doing here. M671. So let's go to our config.g and this has to exist. Any 667s or 669s. So I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna go through this and see if we can get it going. So 667 or 669s, none of them are down here. They're all up here. There's a 669. Might be able to do this right here. No other 667 or 669. So M, what was that? Oh, that's 591. 671. M671. 671. There we are. <laughs> I'm enjoying watching the process from a new user perspective and getting it wrong. Rather than just usual copy existing setup for already knowing the process and skipping steps. I'm glad. I hope that's that's the case for most. Um, 
I think it's useful. I'm hoping it's useful for others. Okay. So now we need to name our X coordinates. And the, the bed screws are, how far on the corners are they on these? Are they five millimeters in? There, here I can probably basically measure this without looking at the CAD. Yeah, I'm gonna say they're five millimeters in on, on the corners. So that should be easy. So X in, in, in list of between two and four X coordinates of the pivot points. So let's go X and the formatting of that was just numbers. So first point I'm gonna put in the front middle, which is X 60. Second point will be at X five and 115. So does that look correct, colons? So X 65 and 115 are the X coordinates of the three points. I'm gonna start at the front, go to the back left, and then go, go to the back right. Um, and then Y is similar. So we're gonna go base Y and the first one is at five colon and then 115, 115. So that should define front, back left, back right. And then maximum correction allowed for each pivot point in millimeters. Default is one millimeter. Well, that's an automatic. Um, I'm going to change that to be, I don't know. It's not going to be out by more than a couple millimeters. So S3. See ya, Phil. And then... Fudge factor, I don't know what fudge factor means. Oh, pitch, pitch of the bed leveling screws, not used when bed leveling using multiple independently driven Z motors. Defaults of 0.5 millimeters, which is correct for M3 bed leveling screws. So if I don't define this, it's gonna be 0.5. So I think I can, I'm okay just not defining anything else in here. I don't know what fudge factor is. I'm gonna leave it at the default of one. Um, M671 is used to define the pivot points these pivot points are often at each lead screw. When this command is used to find the pivot points, the numbers of X and Y must both be equal to the number of drivers used for the Z axis. I don't know if that's gonna work then. Is that gonna kill this? So that's 671 and let's see. So you must use the M671 to define it. You must set up a bed.g file in the usual way with at least as many probe points as adjusting screws. So is there a bed.g file already? Let's just save this. Let's just do that. Do I already have a bed.g file? Okay. And it's, we're not gonna call bed mesh compensation because we don't have a probe, but what does a bed.g file typically look like in this case then? <laughs> I'd just go for a paper style. Well, here's what I was hoping to do. Um, and maybe, maybe I'm, I'm going down the wrong path. My hope was to figure out, so in, in Clipper, there is a setup, a configuration setup that you have to do that gives you an option on the screen to do your bed screws adjust. And it'll just move the print head between the three points and you can adjust it until it's good to what you want. I was hoping for that similar kind of manual matic setup. 
Is that possible? That's what I, that's the route I thought I was going down is to set up level how to adjust leveling screws. Um, M558, let's see, let's go back to another M5, M558, set Z probe type. What is that? That does it. Probe type is P, maybe a switch, some other indicates that no Z probe is present. Whenever Z probing is commanded, it will be prompted to jog the Z axis until the nozzle is just touching the bed and then signal completion. Okay. So 558P0 sets this up. Need the following lines in your M558H dive height, the height above the trigger for which probing height starts. F120 is the initial fast probe followed by probing at second speed, but there shouldn't be a that and then t3000 travel speed two in between probe points and let's give that that i understand what that is let's see m558 this should be in our config file right let's close that is there a 558 already all of what you said there makes sense is there anything must come before G31? Oh, so that would be a, this would end up being a command in the, where does this go? So this should be somewhere, maybe we'll just put it in here too. Did I join the Polar Ted Club? No, you did not. Let's skip by this. P0. H. 5.0 seems reasonable for that. That's the height it's going to start at, right? F. I think. Let's see what this is. Mm -mm. I don't, I, I'll read through that. Probably not right now. <laughs> it's not going to need any mesh and it's not a, it's not an issue about the mesh. It's about getting the three um, screws adjusted. Um, maybe I'll, I, I'm, I'm spending a bit of time here. We're, we're not done with this series. It's going to get another another episode. Um, let me see what this looks like as far as setting an offset. And, and then I will um, probably familiarize myself a little more with how this works. Um, let's go ahead and save this and see what happens, though. Let's see what this does. <laughs> this was not never going to end today anyway. Um, 
what can we do with that once once that's done just just the one last thing here how would you how would you actually once this is all set up how do you actually initiate this to do the the thing I think what I want to start with here. Ah, oh, see a pathetic Puma. G32. So G32 runs what? Runs the bed G macro. Okay, the bed G macro then runs. Because right now we don't want to run the bed G macro because it's a G29. So then, so G32 just runs G29 in this case, but that's got to be deleted because we don't have a probe. So there's no bed mesh to be done. Um, so then what gets put into bed.g? Um, here, this, this should say in here, you must set up a bed G file in the usual way. Should have one probe point close to each, but how do you actually do that? G30? This gets a little confusing. We're going to skip it. Let me clarify, because now I feel like I'm fumbling. Yeah, now I feel like I'm fumbling, though. But let's let's finish up. Um, now, and I'm getting links here. Let me see what this link is. Using, well, that's what I've been clicking on, Nappin. That's what I'm going through right now. This isn't the same page. Never mind. Isn't that, isn't this where I was? I'm getting lost in my tabs now, too. Valid command enables the assistance when you run G32 to perform bed probing. The final G30 command will cause the assistant to run. What is... Oh, okay. Maybe we can do this. Yeah, let me, let me bring this up. We've done a lot of the, the legwork on this. Using the manual bed leveling assistant. What I need to do is get down in here. So we have our example this, and then this is what should be in our... I don't know what the retract probe thing is. This is what should be in our bed.g file, right? Probe near an adjusting screw. What is the X? What is that? So let's look at the G30. G30 is going to be a couple up here. There's G31. There's G30. Probe point number, X coordinate, Y coordinate, Z coordinate. Z coordinate. But the probe point should be the screw point. Okay, so probe one should be 60, Y, 5, and probe two should be 5, Y, 15, 115, 115. It's where on the bed you want the nozzle to stop for each leveling point, so front, middle, left, yeah, so that, what if I save that? Okay. What happens if we do this now? So if I go to the dashboard and I home all first, see you, Andrew. I might still be on in 15 minutes. It depends. I'm doing good. I'm feeling fine. So 
I do want to make progress because I want a stream of it printing. <laughs> Before I actually run this, um, something I do want to find out is where Z0 is. Where is Z0? If it's going to drive the nozzle into the bed, that's a bad thing. Let me get my, my close-up cam um, set up here. I want to, I want to find out. So I want to creep up on Z zero and set the initial, the initial offset there in the middle of the bed. That way we're close at least. That's pretty darn close for just setting this thing in place. <laughs> Let's go. Um, we are at Z20 right now. So let's go Z minus five. There is no probe. Just step it up with the panel where Z0 is. Yep. Yep. And then extend and ex do. Yep. So should go another minus five and then start going by one. Okay, there is no minus 1.5. Right there, it says we're at 1.5, but we're obviously not. So the question is, can I give myself some more compression on these springs to get us closer to the full 120 millimeters of travel, right? Let's see if I can raise this up a little more. There we go. So. Oh, that is the very top of travel right there at 0.5. I actually skipped steps, so I need to re rehome but I ran into the, to the end, the, the stops here, which means my stops could even either be moved up just a hair and let the, let the things over the rails over travel a little bit, which is okay by the half a millimeter that I need. Oh, if you right click, you can, oh, that's neat. See, it lets you change the move step. Awesome. Okay. I need to rehome. I need to rehome at least Z. So I'm rehoming Z. Because I skipped steps at the top because I ran into the, the stops on the thing. Now my rails could move up half a millimeter or whatever it needed. Um, but I can over travel the rails by half a millimeter. No problem. Um, let's go back to here and we're going to move it up to, let's go G zero Z one. Let's go two. Okay, so that's Z2 with some difficulty of focusing there. That's 1.5, 1, one and a little bit more. This is one millimeter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself a little more room here. Point five. Get myself even a little more. There 
or go. That's where I want it. So that is, that may not be where it needs to go as far as um, a paper test, but this makes sure I'm not gonna crash it. I'm also gonna go in here and settle my, my end stops down on the, on the carriages. So then they'll be even. And they're right there. So. Okay. Um, now my 120 millimeters of travel is true. Is, is basically where I'm at. And now I should be able to um, run this G32 command and see what happens. Um, is that right? Gonna go through the homing sequence. I could, I could tweak the. I, I'm I'm open to suggestions, Nurgle, on how to how to make the homing sequence a little prettier. Oh. Okay. So adjust height until the nozzle just touches the bed, then press OK. Now this is this is not really what I want. This is not really what I want. Z equals five. No, it is what I want. I can do, I can go, I can basically go minus five with a piece of paper in there. Now this is what I want to use Chuck's little device for, but I don't have it right here. So I'm gonna use oop, Chris's little leveling device. Put that under there. And then I think I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna tighten my nozzle an extra couple, or the bed screw, extra couple. Make sure it looks like I'll be able to make it. And then we'll go minus five. And now that should be zero. I didn't go quite enough, but I didn't do too bad. I needed half a half a turn. Maybe a little more. Now I'm just gonna adjust this. Okay. So now how do I say the next thing? Adjust hide until and then press okay. Okay. Oh, okay. This is what I was looking for. Now we're at Z5, oops. So now this interface is what I was work looking at. The middle number says where I'm at right now. If I go Z minus five, then I should be able to do that and then set my paper test. And I'm, I'm quite far from the nozzle now, so I can actually get that close and, oops. Yeah, get this guy under here. Why did you not say that from the start? That looks right. And then I say, okay. And then it goes to the next one. <laughs> And then minus five, not quite far from it again, which is good. I'm not crashing the, the nozzle. Yeah. Okay. And then if I wanted to go through that again, I can run a G32 again. And this is gonna go through the whole homing sequence. My, my whole weird homing sequence. Yeah, 
Yeah, you'd want to go through a few more loops because as you adjust those rear ones, this front one's going to be different. Absolutely. Minus five, and it's a little loose, so I can adjust that just a little bit. Okay, is it okay? Now, if I was doing this, um, going through and doing this again, I'm on the edge of the beds here. Um, <clears throat> I would probably move my points a little bit in, so I'm sure that I'm on the... Oops, I gotta go minus five first. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. We are on... Please play Pop the Weasel tune as it's homing. We are pretty much... Bed Z offset is basically set. Um, Z offset is good. Um, what do I have there? That's from my experience with RepRep firmware and texture sheets. You want to paper pretty tight. I figure I'd tweak it a little bit. Um, what pushing plastic today? Yeah, what what should we print? Let's throw the, let's throw a quick test print on it because I think I think we're ready to test print. Yeah. Let's throw a little little tiny print on here. Someone said someone posted they had a they had a print. Who was that? What do we have for, I've got my, uh, I've got the, the, oh, I don't have a filament. I don't have a spool holder. What am I going to do for a spool holder? I can grab a spool holder. You use Chris Riley's level, then you need to test his test, a Benchy. <laughs> Print a bed mesh first. Eh, we're, the, the point of today is to just push plastic and get a print down. Next stream is going to be put the panels on, do finish up any other little nagging things. Um, let's see what we have on on the on the printer. But real quick, I need to go get a temporary spool holder because I don't have the spool holder on here. So I will be right back. Um, enjoy the now correctly centered um, "Be Right Back" text on the Dancing Max. Okay, I'm back. I love having these because <laughs> these are just handy. This is from the original MMU2. It's the it's the spool thing. And then I'm gonna use this this cookie cat stuff. And I think I like this with the Kelly Dragon. That would, that would look really cool. Max is centered. I centered them both. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so let's feed that in there. See how far this will feed. Okay, that seemed to have fed all the way. Let's um, offspring tour had a dancing max for intermission. Small RCF figurine should be printed over after this. We need an RCF figurine. Yes, this is true. Um, let's preheat the nozzle. There we go. And let's get ourselves to 60 on the bed. And let's bring up slicer. Oh, I haven't updated the slicer on here, but that's okay. Um, Let's remind me tomorrow in the update. Let's cancel that. Let's bring this over here. Go here. And let's go V0. Which? There we go. V0 blue. I have no idea what filament settings let's go there and I haven't gone through many of these settings in a while on this printer on this computer what filament is that so that filament is cookie cads um cookie cads witchcraft cookie cads witchcraft let's add a Stream. Do it. Oh, I thought I had. I thought I had various. I'll I'll check. Let's start G code. Bad sound. Everything else is muted. Bad sound? Is it bad sound for anyone else? Did it change? Now the fan is going, and the fan's kind of loud. Sound is fine. Okay. Um, I was looking for a file. I guess we could do a small low poly cat, since that's here in handy. I'm going to do this scaled down though. Let's go 50% low poly cat. He <laughs> kidding. <laughs> um, this is what I was printing at Orange County Maker Fair on the switch wire that we gave away. Let's look at the print settings and Let's look at the extruder. This is an old Bowden profile. So I'm gonna leave most of these settings the same. Um, I think it's it really should just work. There's no um, things we can go. Yeah, rep rep. Let's go rep rep firmware. For stealth mode. Stealth mode will not be applied. And we'll, okay, that's fine. Um, I think, oh, max print height is not 230, it's 120. And let's make sure the bed shape, yep, bed shape's good. Sound is okay. So all of this should be okay. Let's just save that. And the printer should, yep, that should work. As I'm looking to my B0.1, should I consider upgrading it to 0 0.2 before? I don't know that it would make much difference, but 
Okay, so I think my um, my start G code would be fine. I think that's all fine. So let's slice this and see how long it says it's going to take. 19 minutes. You send it, yeah. So if, what if, if I send this, will it actually upload it? Upload. Will that actually work? No. No. Let me see what settings I can do. Can I do this? Um, printer setting. Um, not octo print. I want duet. Will that work? Let's test. Works correctly. Okay. Okay. That's what I had to change. Letter. Let's see if we can upload it now. Upload. There we go. Awesome. Um, there are all kinds of tuning steps. This is just a quick, let's throw a print at it so we can, we can have printed. <laughs> hey, Midnight Wolf from Germany. Welcome. Let's see. So that is there. And now if we go back to here, I want to, here, I want to. Move Z away, and I want to extrude some filament. And go here and here. Put this guy here, and I want to extrude at two. Extrude. Let's see if it's going to extrude plastic. Yeah, it's pushing. Oh, there we go. First plastic extruded. Oh, the hot end has been on. I've had it on for a bit. I turned it on before we we went and sliced. Let's extrude again. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, that is the first plastic gone through that hot end. Where are my tweezers? Got some tweezers somewhere. Good enough. <laughs> Let's bump this back down to something so it doesn't sit there and ooze. Good night, Poity. Thanks for being here. We're pushing plastic. Okay, are we ready to start a print? Let's start a print. How do we start a print in? How do we start a print here? So if I go to jobs, here's our low poly cat with the preview and everything. Let's just start it. Oh, oh, <laughs> we got an error. Is that a, yeah. So that's an error because I've got extra things in my G code. <laughs> well, let's see how it goes. Oops, not that one. Let's go this one. It's trying to set a pressure advance value, but that's not how it works. Extra things in my G code that it doesn't need. Um, where can I? Okay, there's my baby stepping. So I'm, I'm ready to rate it. Ready to baby step it. Wow, it is not, not happy with the. It's not, it's not good. I'm still, what is it doing? It's. That's not what I want, but I'm not quite sure what it's doing. OK, 
Okay, let's pause. Let's cancel the print. Let's see what's going on. Let's... Okay, that's not working. Where's my, where's my tweezers? Okay. Let's just immediately break in this Revo nozzle. And let's look at our, let's look at our setup. Okay, a few things I wanna look at. Let's see what we were actually doing in our slicer. Let's look at my filament settings, 210. 210. Make a big thick five to eight loops of a script that will let you time adjust, yeah. And speed seems high. Let's bump these up, because I. let's just make sure we're flowing good. If we need to reduce that, 225. Let's go to our custom G code and get rid of this pressure advance setting that was giving us giving us trouble. And cooling should be at 100. All of this is probably fine. Let's go to print settings and the skirt. Let's do this like 50 millimeters. No, 35 millimeters from the object. And I like to do my skirts, usually I like to do my skirts at least two layers thick, because then if you do one too, too thin, it's still easy to pull up because the next layer will, um, will print on top of it. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Big skirt, big skirt. So I can adjust it, like you said, and probably do an extra loop. Okay. I did clean the bed. Apparently I didn't clean it well enough. Let me, um, let me see if I have some detergent, some clean detergent in here. Um, no, I don't. Let's do a good Good 99% IPA scrubbing. There's no smooth side here. I do alcohol wipe every print as well. I do. Okay. I'll just do a good, good scrubbing on that. Do that. And... Get our temperature. Oh, it's still, it, it didn't reduce the temperature. Let's go down. I did hear a skipping as well, but I think it's because the nozzle was too close. I think it was too close for the, um, to the bed. I think it wasn't able to push plastic. Now I have baby stepped it up. I don't know if it, um, if it, retains that but let's go again um i need to i need to slice that and upload that okay okay you're back welcome let's go and jobs and print so now it's gonna bump the nozzle so the bed's gonna heat up oh i see okay That prime line seed did seem a little fast, didn't it? 
Let's see what it does here. A little harsh on the, on the essentialist homing there. I'm getting used to Orca Slicer with the VZ bot. If I find that I like it, I haven't used it enough to tell if I like it better or not. Okay, now let's see what happens. Um, there's my baby stepping. That's much better. I'm going to leave that right there. Maybe go down a little bit. Yeah. Yep, maybe go down a little bit more. Yeah, it's not actually sticking. That's okay. Pull that stuff out of the way. It's not going to be great for the second layer. It's better now. And it's not actually sticking very well. <laughs> and I made that thing awfully small. I think 50% was probably a bit much. Okay, we're going to shift gears on this. We're going to, instead of trying to print something, and that's going to, that actually looks pretty good. <laughs> if it makes it through this skirt, then this might actually work just fine. Actually, that skirt's printing higher than it would normally, but because it's on top of a first layer that's not there anymore. something oh it lost the front foot i think i think i made this thing too small so i'm gonna cancel this i need to there's got to be a way to set up the the cancel print to where it moves the nozzle out of the way right because right now it doesn't But that stuck pretty well. Okay. We are just about there. So what I'm going to do different this time is I am going to bump our scale because 50% is just too small. That's an itty bitty cat. Let's go 80%. Let's give it, let's give it a chance. <laughs> Hey, Sanity, welcome. Pause.g? Okay. Um, let's give it a chance. We want the skirt to not be so big. Let's go 20, or 15 millimeters. And slice. There we go. Now let's upload this, and let's just upload and print. The calibration cube cat, yeah. But we're pushing plastic in an organized fashion.
get in there. This up again. See how we're doing. Yeah, there was a skip there. Now I don't know if that's a skip due to my current settings. Um not being enough on the extruder either. looking pretty good nothing's yeah extruded springs is probably fine It is, the nozzle is at temp, and it is skipping. Um, when is it skipping? Okay, I want to do... Nozzle is at temp. It's making weird noises. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Pointy. That's what I was trying to figure out. Is it is it retracts that it's doing it, or is it? Well, now that that lost it. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, it's definitely on retracts. Definitely on retracts. What's the, um, I can do here. I can do this, right? Let me know if I'm on the wrong track, but I can run this command M906 E700. M906 E700, right? Let's see if that takes care of it. What is, what is causing that? There's a chunk. You can do that in Clipper. I'm pretty sure you can. Which, which stepper is making that chunk? It doesn't sound... Uh, no, it's not Z-Hop because the Z, the Z isn't moving.
Wow, I don't know what's actually causing that. When that noise happens, It's not the... I can't actually tell what stepper is causing that. No, it's because it's, it's extruding. It's printing. It's got to be the extruder that's causing that. really weird because that noise you would think you would be able to feel in the stepper old v0 didn't have m4 it had pocket watch do what i do if my printer sounds weird raise the volume of the music ignore it until it didn't work <laughs> this is night watch this is the the night watch extruder it's it's printing I'm going to let this go because I want a little mini cat. This is the updated. This is like Pocket Watch 2. It's called Night Watch. Is that right? <laughs> I, I am a little puzzled where the thunk is coming from. But it's working. It's printing. But don't worry, we're not done. We will have one more stream on this and that'll be panels, top hat, and we'll do an ABS print next. Yeah, it's a retract. I just figured that I would, it's timed with the retract. I just figured I would be able to feel it in the extruder. I've got my hand on the extruder motor. I wonder if that goes away. It's not even getting warm. What if we bump this up? I just bumped up the current on the stepper. It definitely retracts, but it didn't change with bumping the current up. It is, it is a, um, it's very similar to clockwork too. So it's the 10 tooth, um, gear on the, on the round stepper motor and then, um, 50 tooth BMG. Now, Bowden's sticking right there. Yeah, we're going. This is awesome. I'd like to know what that noise is. Uh, it's, in, it's in the printer somewhere. It could be just small noises in the extruder that are being amplified because it's bolted to the back plate. You call it a feature. 
<laughs> no, it's not Z Hop. It's not Z Hop. I can feel it when it Z Hops and it's not timed with the thunks. You should have built a trident. <laughs> No, if I did this again, I would absolutely do rep rep firmware again. I wanted the experience. I want to. I want to integrate rep rep firmware along with my other printers. Not spread it out among my printers, but to have a presence of rep rep firmware in my collection. Um, I want to be able to speak to it better, um, and this is going to add to that the ability to do that. So. The same as, I mean, at some point I'll get a printer that I'm going to keep with Marlin on it. The, the, and the why I say it that way is because we're going to do Marlin on the, on the Rook build. Um, but that one's getting given away. So. Still streaming. Not bad for someone with COVID, huh? I'm obviously feeling better. <laughs> yeah it's, it, you can see it in in here so it's definitely retract moves i'm trying to just feel in different spots on the printer or what might be causing that. I have no idea. I have no idea. I got my booster shot on Tuesday. I got my COVID booster shot and a flu shot on Tuesday. And I'm pretty sure if I would have tested on Thursday, I definitely would have uh, come up positive in hindsight. Um, I tested on Friday. There's only one end stop switch and it's a Z. The filament switch? I don't think that would make this noise. No. It could be that I have a loose scrub screw in the extruder. I'll check it. I would think that I wouldn't be getting a good print though. Although I'm not really happy with the That might be, that might be better as far as focus hunting. <laughs> yeah, it's two millimeters of retract is what it's set to right now. How long did this say it was going to take? 52 minutes. Hey, see you, Norgorot. Appreciate the help. The retract speed might be too high. What is it set to? Let's find out. Let's look at the settings in more detail because I just grabbed, I just grabbed things. So let's go here first and look at the extruder. So we got 35 millimeters per second retraction speeds. What is that compared to some of my other, like here? I mean, it's about what I run on other printers. I mean, I run 40 millimeters on the on this one. These are all, um, let's go here. Yeah, those are all typical. I think starting from scratch, are you kidding? On either one, it's probably pretty equivalent. We've got a little bit of a skewed view being used to Clipper, right? But if you had to start from nothing, going to either one, they're both very steep learning curves.
It's the same, it's the same 10 to 10 to 50, five to one gear ratio on them. It's the same five to one gear ratio. Oh, I lost it. I'm not going to be able to, not going to be able to get the, the whole print. That, that front foot actually came loose. I don't think, yep, there it goes. <laughs> oh, both feet. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Where's the the job? What? Where do? Where do I cancel this now? If I go here, where's my printing? Give me, give me, give me a stop. Let's go to the jobs. How do I actually stop it? I had a stop page. Doesn't give me the option. <laughs> this is kind of dumb. I, I I left the page and now if I come back, how do I actually stop the stop the print? Status. There we are. Status. That's why. Okay. Now it's not dumb. I figured it out. <laughs> you got to go to status. Nah, I think we're about done. <laughs> I had to go to status, not jobs. Okay. <laughs> Almost got there. I've got some bad adhesive issues. I need to do a proper cleaning on it. How do you stop the crazy thing? Yep, exactly. I didn't want to do an e-stop. Ooh, it's loud. Um, oh, that's the other thing. So I need to, so it's important right now here. Notice everything's still heated up. I canceled it. I need to set that cancel.g macro or whatever to turn off the heaters, to move the nozzle away, all that kind of stuff. So. Oh, it says off and it is cooling. Never mind. It did turn them off. It just left the active. It just left those values. It did turn them off. Never mind. But it is still important to do the cancel macro, pause macro. No, I think we're 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 getting done. Let's do some what's coming up, um, where we're going, what's happening next weekend, um, and then call it, call it. So using glue sticks or any of nothing right now. Well, we'll get, we'll get this sticking. It's, this is, um, is what it is. We got, we got it pushing plastic. It pushed it in an organized manner. We got 15% of a print. Um, surprise doc built the ox. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> This coming weekend, we I am planning, my contact shifted. Um, I am planning a Charlie's Angels stream on Saturday and a regular stream on Sunday. The Charlie's Angels stream is probably gonna be the slab, even though Nero's doing his um, either then or shortly around there. Um, it's content that I don't have to prep for because I've already printed the parts. So uh, we'll do, we'll finish this up on Sunday, which means putting the panels on, and getting a, a more proper print going. And, and then I'll be at Smurf. So I will not be streaming the first weekend in December because I'll be at Smurf. Hopefully I'll see many of you there. Folks that I wouldn't have had an opportunity to see before. Um, yeah, and Slab is a, a, a foam dart blaster. It's the lever action one. So I'll be able to compare that to the, to the other builds I've done. Um, the Rook build, I might do something in between this and the Rook build, only because I'm not quite ready on it. I don't like some aspects of the um, 
of the some of the files that are out there, especially since I'll be shipping this one. Um, the current Fabrico files have the power supply mounted, cantilevered on plastic parts, and I don't believe that I want to risk it surviving shipping, the, the jostling of shipping. So either a modification to fully support the power supply or something is going to need to be done before I'm ready for that build. So although I've printed a bunch of the parts, I think I'm going to need to start over on some of them. So we'll see. I need to decide. Um, I do have in my possession right now. Um, let's do that. Um, this guy. Which is the switch wire kit. So that's coming up and then I have a few other things planned. So, um, yeah, with that, thanks for everyone for being here. Thanks for to Polymaker for donating filament. If you need any affiliate links in the, in the description, um, Tic Tac is on the list. Absolutely. Um, that does not have Leviathan, but it does have the Nighthawk tool headboard, I believe. Um, thanks for everyone who donated memberships or became members. Once again, hope you have a good rest of your weekend. Hope everybody um, who's celebrating it has a good Thanksgiving coming up. Um, I'm really looking forward to that extra time off to get other things going. So, <laughs> take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Mm -hmm. Bye.